Yeah, exactly. I got you up there. There's no way. Thank you. So, Karen, we had a whole group that was going to drive down to Washington yeah. and sit in a meeting with you. Like, the bus has not gotten there yet? <laughs> Karen, can you see us? I can't see Miss Liz. That's the good point. <laughs> but you can see the rest of us. Yes, I can. Thank Just so I know to behave. <laughs> Which camera is she on? All right, I guess, I guess we'll get no, an I think that. So, this is something we've never done before. So this is brand spanking new, so bear witness, there's gonna be some trial and error. Well, thank you for inviting us on yeah. So um, before you start, I just want to thank our city clerk Dave Frazier for holding our hands and all of this learning about our community. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, the way these things work is really you just you're going to be lis listening to us having conversations about city business. It's there's no public input at the working meetings. Um, if any of this stuff becomes a resolution on uh, the city council agenda, of course, you get the comment that uh, uh, during the public comment period at the city council meeting or at Good and Welfare. Uh, but this is basically just the council members uh, talking about city business. So, like I said, don't don't be pipe don't pipe in <laughs> unless we ask. And uh, with that, I guess we'll start with uh, the first item. Uh, Oh, yeah, just real quick, uh, and this will be fast, just talking about the, uh, the one agenda item. The Tuesday that's been submitted to us about uh, adopting uh, the City of Long Beach Transportation Department Drug Alcohol Testing Policy Manual. Um, what you emailed us today didn't have the, the document itself, but I assume it's in the pack. Yeah, the normal, that has all the normal backup. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I sent you is just the same thing that will go on the website tomorrow morning. Right. So it's just the, the, the basic agenda item. Okay. So if we have questions about this regarding it, but does the rest of the city have something similar? I know there's things in the, the employee handbook. The, this is actually required so that we continue to get federal the transportation funding, or 90% right. of the funding for any of the transportation equipment that we do for the bus service. But is it required by any other entity for? No. Okay. All right, so with that currently. This has a very narrow scope. Okay, great. So right now, currently, there's only one agenda item. Just, I had a question okay. for you. Um, so you said that there's no minutes required for this meeting, correct? Right. Okay, so we're just winging it and taking our own notes. Yes, uh, in effect, like I said, we're this is supposed to be an informal discussion with no action and no for, no formal action taken at this meeting. It's just a discussion. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, we're going to be learning as we go. Uh, so with that, I guess uh, is that Mr. Kelly here who's going to talk to us about uh, the proposed doc. So I don't know the best way to approach this. Stay here, uh, move around I, a little bit. We're <laughs> in a formal group. Beyond. As long as you can, as long as the, you do our yeah, camera. Well, I want things for Karen. Yeah. So Which way? Well, Karen's on this camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll then some move over here so that you have clear view. Okay, so you want me to go over here? I would say. Yeah. And just so everybody knows, the reason we, we, we're in this room, we have to, um, the way the open meeting laws work is Karen couldn't just call in. It's required she has to video conference in. And this is the only meeting room in the city hall capable of doing that. So thank you everyone. Yeah. Well it looks like it works. Thanks to Dave Frazier. Yeah. Looks good. So um we did have a conversation with uh, previous council members to this new council about this project that's now been pending for four years, five years, it'll be almost five years I guess this spring. Uh, this is the project that's uh, been proposed in response to two requests for proposals 
for water services along what some call our bayfront or our channel. Um, when were those requested? Do you remember the April date? April 15, 2015 was one, the first one. Uh, 2015. Oh, April Right, and then the, and then the second one was May of 2016. And uh, the principals of Sunset uh, were encouraged by the city to go and get their permits, and they in fact did get their permits. And I've submitted that to all of the uh, previous council members, and I believe the three of you uh, council members, uh, Delore, Trusted, and McGinnis, have uh, a copy of those. To be clear, I don't have the documents. They were delivered to my house on Monday. And, and they were happened. emailed to you yesterday morning? At your city. So I have to tell you, I've emailed things to the city city council members before, and I'm not quite convinced that they actually got them through the emails. So Thank you. don't be surprised if you don't have it. So we did bring some charts, and I'd like I'd like to have uh, Pat Nugent and Brian Brian Bradish talk to you as well because they're very inti intimate intimately uh, uh, involved with the building of the actual marina and the services that are gonna be provided. But I just wanna make a couple of, of key observations from somebody who's a resident here and doesn't live too far from the, the area of the proposed site. Um, you know, we, we live on a barrier island and I don't own a boat. I don't know if anybody on the city council owns a boat. Uh, and to be quite frank, I don't want to own a boat. My understanding boats are black holes. Um, but I would like to get on a boat and we happen to live in a place where that should be easy to do, and it's not. You either have to have a dock, or you have to have your own boat that you can bring to a boat launch that happens to be falling in disrepair, uh, and is not well maintained. Um, so what's being, what was requested by the city and being proposed by Mr. Nugent and Mr. Bradish is in fact a service that we know the people of the city of Long Beach Want. How do we know that? Well, a poll was conducted uh, by the city of Long Beach, which showed somewhere near 80 percent of the residents of the city want want this type of service in the city. Was the poll included in the package? Excuse me. Was the poll included in the package? I think it was. It definitely was. It definitely was uh, to the previous council members. If you don't have it, I'd be more than happy to, to get it to you. Uh, I don't remember seeing it, but. Yeah, I, I could have missed it. it was, I definitely uh, have. Which, which date you, you emailed it to the council? Okay, there's several dates, Dave, yeah. so I, I, I can't tell you. I can tell you this much. Yesterday morning, just after 9 o'clock, I emailed to Vice President McGinnis a package. All right, I'll check. I'll check and it didn't get kicked back to me. Yeah, but it could have got caught in the spam filter. So that's, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll check the spam filter. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I, I think it was over 100. Well, I didn't send any to anybody oh, else. Okay. I, I had sent, I had, we had handed copies to you and, yeah. and Councilmember Mandel. And I, and I believe uh, one was delivered to Liz as well. And I know I sent one to you. Okay. Yeah, I think it was over 100 pages. Yes, it's yeah. big. It's yeah. big. Um, so that's, that's my first point. My second point is, uh, just an anecdote, anecdotally, um, there was a zoning issue over on West Park Street in the west end of Long Beach, and I represented the homeowners who were concerned with the way the house was being built. But I couldn't see the house from the bed. So I had a friend of mine who has a boat take me out in mid-February, beautiful crystal blue day, and we got on the boat launch and we went out and requested it was windy as old get out and it was cold. Uh, so we went and, and looked at the house, took the pictures that we wanted to take. And I had said to him in passing while we were travel, traveling uh, on the channel, Pe people just don't know what we have here. This is a, a marvel. And I, I can look out my back windows and see the channel. I, I, I live on West Fulton Street. But to actually be on it and experience and realize that you live here gives you such a greater appreciation of, in fact, where you live uh, that I think we've denied the, the residents of the city, uh, and I say we, I'm talking about us collectively, our, ourselves. We've denied ourselves that opportunity to take advantage of the water. Um, another quick point I want to make is that we're also uh, missing the opportunity to participate in a service that is red hot now. If, 
the, the, the taxi service, the ferry services uh, just west of us are working well. Uh, they're, they're attracting people, they're transporting people, and I'm not talking just about commuters. I think Rockway has seen great success in the boats that are leaving uh, uh, Lower Manhattan and, and traveling to Rockway. I, th I know that uh, Fire Island Taxi Service, which has two ferries, uh, will be uh, operating in a loop. I think I mentioned this quickly at the, at the city council meeting during Good and Welfare. Uh, that will entail uh, Island Park, Point Lookout, actually probably a couple of stops on Point Lookout, Freeport, quite possibly Merrick as well. And they'd like to be able to uh, deliver people to and from Long Beach as well. Um, uh, and they're prepared to, to invest another $500,000 for two additional boats uh, in, this, in this loop. Um, so I think, I think this is a good time I think there was a reason why the city requested these proposals, um, and uh, I think we should take advantage of it. One other thing, let me just talk about where we are in terms of, of how, how we can make use of the bay or the channel. We don't own the channel. We don't own the bay. We don't have jurisdiction over the channel and the bay, okay? We have permits from the town of Hempstead from the state of New York and the Army Corps of Engineers to build this project. We can build this project. We can build it now. What we need from the city is, is ostensibly an agreement to be able to cross the bulkhead. And what do you make, mean? What do you mean by that? So uh, uh, West Bay Drive, nothing, right, right, right here between between uh, Magnolia and Washington. Okay. You have people right. who have their houses along the bay. And you have that grassy area right. between the street, between West Bay Drive and the street. Right. They, by virtue of history, uh, I'll leave it at that, have a right of way. They have a right of way to walk out their front door, cross the street, and walk right in the water. They have water rights. But would I be able to do it on their, <clears throat> can I go onto somebody else's property? Well, they have a right of way. Do I have a right of way as a... No, no, well, we have rights of way. We, we, their right of way can't be obstructed from, okay. from their front door to, 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 their to the bulkhead. Okay. And there was a disagreement, and back in 2000, I'd say, yeah, 2000, before 2001, the city reached an agreement. And we had a, a, lot of it, a lot of the dispute had to do with the bulkhead itself. A new bulkhead was put in, West Bay Drive was just redone. Um, and they had water rights, they had the right to build. They have docks, uh, you know, just north of the bulkhead. Their problem was, at least there was opposition, their problem was they couldn't cross city property, that being the bulkhead. There was a bulkhead with a fence on it, right? So we came to an agreement with the neighbors um, where they could pay $1,000 a month for, for 12 years uh, for the, 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 the right to cross what we call the gate fee. It was gate fee. Mm -hmm. If you go down there now, you'll see some locks on some gates right. and you'll see some bolts on some gates. Right. The bolts, more than likely, are people who never paid the gate fee. Uh, okay. So, and if you paid the $12,000, you, you then had that right uh, deeded to you. And it literally is reflected in your deed forever. and it's little forever. And it, way, it was the way to resolve an issue. It resolved it well. At the time, not far from here, I had a neighborhood in my face telling me, how could you, we can't, and do, do, do. It turned out to be a bonanza for the people who were offering it. So, and I just give you that by way of comparison. Mm -hmm. the, it's the same thing here. We have the right to build. We have all the plans approved. We have the permits, one of which, and one of the reasons why we're hot on trying to get this before the city council and forum vote is we have a permit it's already been extended once with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that expires April 28th of 2020, so just several months from now. So we've come up with a proposal that we've given to the city. In fact, we've, we've increased the fees that we were proposing for this gate fee that we would like to pay to have the opportunity to cross uh, 
across the bulkhead and into the dock area. So with that, I'll give you, I'll give you, I expect that you've gotten this already, but I'll give you what's been proposed for three five-year terms. First initial five-year, I think John, you've had this in list, you probably have yeah. as well. Yeah. I sent it to you, Karen, I'm sorry you don't have it. But we had a meeting with the previous city council members, at which point in time we had. When you say previous, can you just skip their names so we know which ones? Uh, council member Bendel, council member Mandel, council member Moore. Not at Ramon or They were present. Um, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That was too loud. Um, it wasn't. In 2015, Bendo wasn't on the council back then. No. What I think uh, council member Tristan was asking me is when did I have, when did we have that meeting that I'm referring to, correct? Okay. Is, she that what you're asking? what council members had actually been yeah. seeing the proposal. Oh, I think they all saw the proposals. I think the, these, pro these proposals were, were circulated for years. You're talking about the the updated proposal in terms no, of No, I'm not talking about the updated proposal. So this started with This is 2015. The storms and we had Brian Bendo and Tristan Bendo and Bendo was there and then we had like the carnival the, se the Sunset Bay Festival. Right. right. I think that was and I'll let him speak to that. I think that was Mr. Bradish's way of demonstrating that that area is underutilized right. and is very attractive. It's amazing, because I only live a couple of blocks away, it's amazing how many people walk through town. And these are people who live here. Mm -hmm. Walk through town to go to that. Do you, and, and, it, and I think it's a great way to showcase what we have. And you know, you know this as well, and I'll say it, because I was involved in it, and I'm sure you're going to be involved in it uh, during your tenure, is that we've tried, a bit, we, we've, we've tried to figure out some way of making access to the channel uh, east of here, right? The, 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 the area where the, the power plant is and the, the city facilities are, where the, where the uh, incinerator site used to be, and we are not having any type of breakthrough whatsoever. The well, railroad won't let us do a pedestrian crossing, so on and so forth. This is a good opportunity for the city to make use of the channel, to introduce people to the channel. And when I say the channel, I'm not just talking about standing in the parking lot on a nice August evening and enjoying what Brian was able to put together. I'm talking about actually getting on a, a, a watercraft and perhaps going around the island or taking a taxi to one of these other destinations, or if, if, they, if, they, if it was ever used for a fishing trip. Um, I'm talking too much, unless you have another question for me. I'd like Pat Nugent to come up and tell us who he is. He's one of the principals of Sunset. And let him explain to you what it is. And I can hold it to Pat. Tell what you do. Good evening. Um, my name's Pat Nugent. I do marine construction for the past 30 years now, uh, self-employed. So basically everything you see here in the drawing, I build it, install it, and uh, make it all happen. Um, I guess my biggest thing here is, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna answer any questions that you might have about the whole project. Well, let's say a couple of things. One, this is seasonal, by the way. This is not a year-round uh, service that's gonna be provided. So think in terms of it being, uh, a lot of these are floats, <coughs> and I'll let Pat talk about that in a second. The floats are taken away. What can be taken away are taken away by mid-November, okay? Because you don't leave this, this type of work out in the channel we have now and right. be the, destroyed. The pile we stay, but the floats soon removed. Right, right. And then in April, mid-April, they're put back in. And the expectation, I think the taxi service is probably gonna run if, if we're allowed to have them come here. It's gonna run probably from mid-May or Memorial Day uh, up and through, up until uh, perhaps uh, you know, Labor Day or a little bit after that. But so that's, that's gonna be the high point of the business is during the summer. When we first started this whole process, we were only looking for the pier. This is a fixed pier. Mm -hmm. This is a ramp that, that uh, gives you access to the floats. 
So initially we were only looking for, basically from this point to this point, a landing area for the water taxi service. Um, we were instructed uh, to say, hey, well, why can't we go more or do more to be able to uh, give the residents the opportunity to be able to rent boat slips? Where's your access point from? Yeah, I was going to say, the last time you met, it would be helpful if you show on this map yeah, 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 yeah. where that, uh, that floating dock starts from. So, right, you're looking at the parking lot. Right. This is Magnolia Pier. Right, the, the, the rec. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, oh, the rec is actually over here. This is the ice skating rink. And here's the gazebo, mm -hmm. right? So it would be right in this area. That, that pier <coughs> that Pat's referring to. Sorry. <coughs> This pier would be just east of the gazebo. How far out is it going? How far? Approximately seven. Show me with your fingers, please. Seventy feet. Can you show me? Great. Approximately how far? North. How far from? How far from north. the bulkhead? Going to north. the water. Uh, this is a, this is hard to do to scale, yeah. but you're talking about right about here. So, so you're slightly. not passing the pier. No, 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 no. We're not Set passing back. the pier at all, and we don't encroach to the west with this. Um, there's probably about 80 feet from this fence line or property line, the parking lot line, mm -hmm. until you get to the beginning of the floating dock system. It actually shows the, dif the differential between the pier, where it says adjust the fishing dock, and yeah. the oh, okay. between that. Yeah, so you, you're somewhere about 80 to uh, 80 to 100 feet between the two. Oh, yeah. So and, just, oh no, from the ahead. property line. From the property line, I'm sorry. And is it 300 feet uh, east? Uh, Goes east. East west, 300 feet. So how far east. would that be? How far approximately would that take past the uh, skateboard rink? Again, it's hard to scale on this, but I, you know, I you're. I couldn't even guess. Like, okay. You're approximately here. Approximately, yes. Right. So just to give you an idea, that I, I believe this is. Ryan, what was that? 1700 feet. Yeah, there's more like 1,200 feet, it's a long way from... So basically from yeah. this property line all the way down to your boat ramp, which is right here. Right. So from here to here, it's about 1,500 feet. So this project overall, it's not that much of the waterfront. So, so it's 1,500 feet, this is a quarter of that? So not, one quarter of oh. not even a quarter. You know, maybe that? Yeah, Same so it's, it's a very, in, in this scale, you're talking about our floating dock system is going to be something like this. And this, this walking path is a highly underutilized area. I mean, you know, the basketball courts are highly utilized, right? The kids are there. This, this I've seen very active. This is just more or less, don't want to use the term dump, but I so just did. there be... No, it's always packed over there. The well, dog park is there now. Well, the dog park, it's on. It's I don't think it's necessarily packed. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to I think that's a, probably an accurate statement. Yeah. But as far as generally, no. What are those two, John? Um, what are those two, uh, those X's, the black pieces with the X's to it, or the uh, sewer plant? This is the electric uh, treatment is at the sewer plant. This whole property here is all wastewater treatment plant. That whole thing. Okay. And the wastewater treatment plant is about five acres that comes out to here. Okay. And actually surrounds the dog park. I got it. Okay, thanks. The the dock, is it going to have power? Will there be electricity there? Electricity, we're really trying to lean away from electricity. We're going to need uh, electricity for some kind of safety lights for up on the pier and that kind of thing. Right. But each boat having their own power, no, we're leaning away from that. But we would have to run water down there. Right? You know, salt water, salt gets on everything. Okay, so there will be lights on the... Uh... There would have to be some sort of lighting on the pier, the stationary pier, that just is for safety. Does this look like something so, I'm sorry, John. At the town of Hempstead, at their boat pier, they have the power boat? and water at each, but it, it's but, pretty much going to look but the that same. similar boating where people put their boat mm -hmm. and dock with mm -hmm. So we potentially have people coming off their boats in the dark onto floating docks with no lights. Well, no, no, I said there's going to be safety lights. Not, I'm, I'm not running power to every boat. 
In other words, like well, you, to plug it. So it'll go out into the floating sections as well? Yeah, you would need some sort of lighting, low voltage right. lighting. So, so somebody there. doesn't exactly, go yeah. off the end there or off the side. You would need low voltage. You know, I'm not, we're not looking to put spotlights out there and have everything, you know, uh, drawing attention to it. Um, but yeah, for safety, we would have to do low voltage. Okay, and then you're gonna run water out there too, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. So that means you're tapping into the city water somewhere. Yeah. Can you hear us, Carrie? That can be metered. That would have to be metered. Yeah. yeah. The gardens are metered. You know, the various small gardens are metered. And who would meter it? Is that uh, the <coughs> tenant? The water department. That? No. But well, who would the meter the meters are paid for by the, whoever is using the service. The meters. Right. Yeah, at this point, our code is paid by the uh, user. The user. <laughs> and the, the just. To put it out there, the, the operation and the things on the water taxi, we're not looking to run, uh, you know, into the wee hours of the morning. It's going to start at say, you know, nine or ten in the morning, and we really like to put a put a stop to it by eleven. It really, we don't know an exact time because we don't have any routes set up. This water taxi system is coming to Island Park, Freeport Point Lookout. And so we don't have an exact route and time and anything set, but we would like to stop the operations by 11 o'clock. Does that water taxi actually run through Reynolds Channel now? Not now. No, no I mean, well, how does it get from Freeport to Rockaway? Freeport to uh, Rockaway? To Rockaway or the city. You, you said that, that there's a route that exists now. Yeah. That covers Freeport and- No, no, that's coming this year. We're, oh, okay. we're bringing the water tax. We're partnering so, with Fire So if we didn't have taxi. this, then the type water taxi would be going through this channel anyway. <laughs> No. no. Well, it would be in this channel, but it would be it would be east of here. Right. Oh, okay. Right. It would be, it would, park. and it might it may even yeah, it'd still be east of here because it would be an island mm -hmm. park, and then it would travel it would travel down to Point Lookout. Okay. You say island park, you're talking about pops, or you're talking about that newer place up by the old trash. Uh... Well, we're talking about we're talking about getting into the condominiums. We have to stop at the condominiums. Okay. Pick people Jordan, up there. Jordan Oster Farm. Farm. Um, okay. Pops, Docks, Peter's Clam Bar. I have a question. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you have to get approval for your routes from anyone? No. We've approached the village of Freeport and we've approached all these um, owners and they're all on board with us. They, they can't wait for the whole thing to start. So those are for the docks. Do, do we, do, do, does the taxi need permission to actually travel the waterway? No. 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 And all the facilities are, go ahead, I'm sorry. It appears that the jurisdiction of Reynolds Channel is under the town of Hempstead Bay Constable. Yes. Correct. So, so they they don't approve the routes or anything like that. No. Because because I, I just I'm just not understanding congestion and safety issues in such a you know a highly trafficked waterway already. Well, the U.S. Coast Guard, um, all the water taxis are. Um, regulated by the U.S. Coast Guard. They're inspected and life jackets. Just to give you guys an idea what's happening is there's not going to be one little tiny boat. There's going to be multiple boats that, so you would be able to get on, let's say if this project went through, you know you'd be able to get on at 10 o'clock in the morning. You could go to Freeport or Point Lookout or just do the route, but every roughly hour and a half you know that you'd have a ride home. So it's going to be a, a constant running thing. How many people does this Approximately 40. Okay. Do, you have, um, do you also have any OSHA requirements for um, fuel and disposal for um, operating such a, such a program? Yeah, everything is regulated. Yeah. Exactly. So can you go into some of the OSHA regulations that you're required to do? Well, in terms of the OSHA, there, as to my knowledge, OSHA is not involved in that. Regulations as far as the fuel and capacity, that's all regulated by U.S. Coast Guard. Each vessel, vessel is inspected. And, and, yeah. and, what, and can you send me a copy of the uh, environmental feasibility study that you did for this program? I, I don't know we what was necessary to do. So nobody has asked you for an environmental feasibility study for this project? We have all the permits that we need to build. Well, I, I guess, I guess uh, wording it differently, we have gone through all the agencies to right. get the project done, and everything has gone through the proper channels. Um, so. The Department of Environmental Conservation, we passed all that. Uh, the Town of Hempstead, we passed all that, and the Army Corps of Engineering. And that, that would be in the packet 
that's at your house, Vice President McGinnis, and, and uh, you know what, we'll get it to you somehow, some way, at some point. So we have full approval from the, the it's called the DEC for short, Department of Environmental right. Conservation. The New York State Department, right? You said that, I'm sorry. Yes. New York State Department yes. of Environmental Conservation. Yeah. And, and what is the opinion from the, uh, how does this fit into the comprehensive plan, either the draft one that hasn't been approved or the prior one? Well, Has there been a reconciliation between this project and the, and the comprehensive plan? Because right now, I would say that property to me is worth $10 million. What property? Which the, property? The Bayfront right there. I, I, I think that property is worth $10 million to me right now. Okay, and would it, when, we, it, when we enhance the value of it by virtue of having a nice little marina or a taxi service there? Plus, it's public land. And that public land to me is worth $10 million. Okay, well, I'll give you that. What is, so, what, what, is, what is that relative to, to, I don't understand the point. Uh, I'm trying to understand the value of the Bayfront relative to the comprehensive plan, and I don't have a comparison right now, so I can't really judge your project in the, in the true R ROI of what that land is worth to Long Beach. In, but, terms, of the, in terms of what they want to pay? Yeah, what, what they want to pay and what is the highest utilization of that property for the residents of Long Beach. Right now, I'm going to submit to you the highest utilization for, for the access to the water is this project. You don't have anything else, you're not going to get anything else, and, and now's the opportunity to strike while you can. And in fact, what I'll tell, what I'll tell you from my own experience, it will encourage the, the, the ultimate development and growth of the channel from, from here east. And we've so been, can, you, can you please reconcile that statement with the, compre the current compre the comprehensive plan draft to confirm it? Why, when you say to confirm what? The comprehensive draft hasn't even been accepted by the council. Do you want me to tell you that what we really want to see over at the Bayfront is not the development of condominiums? We don't want that. We want the development of recreational use. We want the development of restaurants and walkways and things of that nature. That's the and comprehensive, I, those are two comprehensive plans that I've read. Therefore, I want to see how this program falls into the existing or the draft comprehensive plan because a lot of people spend a lot of time on those comprehensive plans and we can't have one-off projects that don't conform with the comprehensive plan. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I'll do you a memo. You'll have it by, by the beginning of next week. I don't have a problem doing that. Has there been a parking study done? Because uh, we know when there's events at the ice arena and stuff that parking lot fills up quickly. So now we're talking about obviously adding people that are going to be jumping on and off the uh, taxi. So has there been any kind of I would submit to done? you that the, and I, I, no, the answer to your question is no. Okay. All right. And number one, that's because the city never asked for that. The city is the one who requested this proposal. The city was the one that suggested that what, what Mr. Nugent was, was referring to earlier actually grow in scope. Okay. That's fine. So, and I would further submit to you that during the summer is probably the, the, the least the least parking restraint. I mean, obviously, if there's a if there's a one particular event, I mean, this time of year, from from when the school year starts up through to the end of the school year, because of hockey and, all, and swimming events and all sorts of other events, it's a busy area, no doubt. But during the summer, in fact, during the summer in August, it's very quiet, very quiet. Okay, um, we're gonna have to stop winding down here soon because yeah. we got other stuff to get to, but so let me, let me get to my uh, uh, big issue. When you guys put your business plan together to do this, you know, you, you're figuring out what's in it for you to make sense that this project makes sense for you guys to do. So we have to ask what's in it for the city. Now clearly having a marina and stuff like that certainly has its event, no, if, no arguments there, water taxi, I think people would like to be able to get to other areas, but, here's the but, what you're proposing to pay, you're asking for a trolley, that's an expense. Um, there's gonna be sanitation required to clean up the area because people are gonna leave trash, that's an expense. The bathrooms are gonna get used, gotta clean those, that's an expense. Like there's going to be incidents where the police have to go down there and do things. That's an expense. Um, 
I'm going to guess the city hasn't done an analysis of what it's going to cost the city to have this thing there. But uh, if I had to take a guess, and that's why I made the comment the last time, because you guys, <clears throat> quite frankly, were looking for 300 feet of waterfront property for, for basically almost free. Um, well, I, I beg to differ with that, that characterization. We're not getting waterfront property. You don't have waterfront property to give. We're providing a service. They're providing the investment. The memo said, and several memos, $257,800 of an investment just to build a uh, marine. Yeah, no, no, I'm not disputing any of that. I'm not saying, I'm not arguing any of that, but what I'm saying is there will be expense to the city to have this thing there. And, you, you know, so, our, our, our outlook to this whole thing is trying to draw people into the city. I, I get that. I mean, that, that's our... Yeah, no, so, I get that. Helps the businesses. Yeah. I, I, I understand all I mean, that. On the other end, like when we land in Freeport, it's the same thing. They're, they have a marina that they provided that they're, they're willing for us to land at, and they're providing all the service. They're not, they don't, they're not looking for one cent from us just to be able to operate. They want the flow of people back and forth. Out of okay, so you got this you're gonna have about thirty boat slips, right? Approximately. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna get about two grand a boat slip, so there's sixty grand. So right there, just off of the boat slips, your payback period is about four years, which is a pretty good payback period on it. Right? <coughs> Not sure. You know. Yeah, you should understand everything else. Uh, no, I, I get that. But now you're gonna do whatever you're gonna do, your kayaks and your paddle boards, if you're gonna do your jet skis. The water taxi, of course, will bring in revenue. So um, and the water taxes, we, we don't have a number. Like, if I could give you a real number. Right, it depends on the traffic or whatever. I get, I get that. I've, I've taken the Fire Island water taxi many times um, out east. But again, there's, there's a cost to the city as well. And quite frankly, it's not, we shouldn't be subsidizing your business activity. Um, so, but you also, if you like the project, you have to find the middle road as to where exactly their return on investment is a worthwhile endeavor. That's why. That's why the, the, the private coming to work with the government works. So if there's a if there's a storefront if there's a storefront here on, on the, the main strip here, I don't know exactly what taxes are in Long Beach or what have you. They're going up. <laughs> Approximately, I mean, a storefront here they pay the taxes. They're supplied with. Um, Sanitation. No, they pay for sanitation. I think a, well, it's part of the tax. It really it's, it's no, part of the tax. It's, it's a fee. fee. There's actually yeah. sanitation fee. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a it's a sanitation fee. It's, part of, it's a tax. It's so separate and apart from the tax. I, think we're the tax. I know, but it really is a tax. I pay the sanitation fee, you pay the sanitation fee. But what, I, what, I'm, what I'm actually suggesting is you take this project and in, in the layout there, we've actually put in there, you guys can take the project at the end of the 15 years if you take the investment that it's going to take for us to install this, make it work, repair it over the years, the, you know, the repairs that need to be done, you divide that between 15 years, I think that... Again, when, I don't think we're arguing the merits of the project, it's just... Well, I'm talking about the money wise. Right, we shouldn't be subsidizing it. So I, I think what I would like to see, because like I said, we got to wrap up and we can have another conversation. Mm, okay. Uh, I, I don't know if it's possible, could we put together an estimate of what the city costs would be in terms of sanitation, the trolley, police, you know, I, I get it, it's not gonna be an exact science. No, no, we'll be sure we'll put but if we yeah, could right. put an estimate together just to make sure. Right, you're basing we, it on we season. have an idea. Right. You're basing it on season, right? Yeah, yeah I'm assuming there's a Memorial Day to Labor Day. No, I mean, that's, that's, what that's what they stated. It's, it's not only around, it's seasonal. Correct. Yes, Just correct. one more question because I know what we're going to have to wrap up. Um, and liability insurance, you would cover by us. I, I, that's, I, you know. Now what happens, that yeah. is a good question. So, if, but if yeah. somebody comes off of the dock and mm -hmm. crosses the line of the city property, some drunk and takes a dive, mm -hmm. now we're liable. Well, I'm sure there's a, um, one, an umbrella policy, or you, we can name the city additionally insured. I mean, we might need to be so, indemnified or yeah. named as an additional insurer. So I do. But I think, I think you know I, would, would, would be, I you know what it would be. You require that. In that the, the document. Yeah. That you, you just name the city additionally insured. Yeah, so why don't we do this? 
let's let's get this rough estimate from them, and let's okay. let's set up. Uh, I'm going to do a memo. Set, another meeting. You know, you got a deadline. Yeah. That you, you okay. Need and to I will I will prepare a memo and 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 try to highlight for uh, the council, but particularly for the vice president, uh, this relative to the most recent draft. And I'll take a look at the, the one before it too. Yeah, because we probably would have to have a public hearing because we. Sure I'm sure we're going to have to have sure people on West Bay Drive have an opinion right. about this thing. Right. Um, I see John sitting over there, yeah. so I'm sure he's he's got something he, he's going to want to say. Um, so, uh, no, well, there's no, there's no input here at this meeting, but, but I'm saying, so we'll set up another meeting. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll set up another. Brian, I, Brian just wanted to say something. Yeah, sure. Just say something like, you know, as far as this whole project going on, we've been waiting to do it for a while. You know, if you look at other municipalities, whether it's Allen Park. So let me start over again. If, if you go to Island Park, Freeport, Point Lookout, Merrick, Wontoy, all those communities have <coughs> arenas yeah. that are built by the municipalities. Here we are looking to donate something to $260,000 this is costing us to provide a service here. To me, it's a no-brainer why it shouldn't be done. Not only that, we're donating slips to the police department, the fire department to here, they should have emergency services. When someone's in the water, you know, minutes is, is, could cost people their lives. And, it, and, it, and it's real important to get something like this done. You just had a brand new dock built by the town of Hempstead in the city of Long Beach, right down at the Western Firehouse. That's great. Do you know where the float still is today? It's still sitting in the water out there. If that's a $10,000 float, if we were doing this project, we would tow it and take it away and store it for you. Whether you have numerous access points for emergency services when you're on the water, it's important, and, that, and that's all we want to say. Yeah. So let's, 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 let's get let's get them to work up that number, and then we'll just we'll set another time. We'll sit down and we'll sit down. I, 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 John, I do have one one, yeah, very, sure. one quick question. I think that is kind of interesting. Is presently the, the additional slips that you have that aren't for the water taxi? Those were are uh, for boats that are coming in on a daily basis. Right. A transient? Transient folks, right? Well, no, we, we want to limit it to um, Long Beach residents for rentals. So, so are these going to be permanent rentals for the summer? Yeah. But I mean, because I think that's an interesting concept. There's a lot of boating people in Long Beach don't have a place to dock their boats. They don't live on a canal. Maybe and we want to limit it just to Long Beach residents. Right? Yeah. Long Beach residents so only keep their boats yeah. elsewhere because we don't have a marina yet. Yeah. 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 So okay. that might be something that, you know, is helpful in terms of people having a place to actually keep their boats. So, that don't live on a canal, that live in the middle of town, that are boating people, they can go out and have a place where they can keep their boat on a regular basis. So, yeah. That numerous people ask us that. And, and that, that would be that would be allowed. Sure, just for Long Beach residents only. We want to thank you very much for your time. You. This, was, this was a good experience. Yeah. Thank you. Well, trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just like to ask for. Uh, for all projects, we should be having economic analyses like this, and um, that's the responsibility that we have to the residents. So it's not going to be it's great for the residents anymore. It's going to be where we have numbers to prove that it will be benefit benefit the residents. Well, economic <laughs> and environmental, right? Yeah. In addition, I also want to ask Don and Nina to ask the other municipalities for their cost analyses on their taxi services and what target percentage profit they're making to benchmark us to make sure that we would make at least the same on such a project. Thank you. Did you say one taxi? Yeah, what's yeah, what's yeah. What's she's just looking like, what, she's looking for the work to yeah. Yeah, looking for numbers. Yeah, okay. John, you look at it? All right, thanks, no, you guys. Guys. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Good night. So, hi everyone, I'm Stacy Adler in Somo, and I am a part of Beach Burger on the boardwalk at Grand Boulevard. Um, I just want to take a little minute just to introduce myself to you. Um, I've been in the restaurant and bar business for over 30 years. 
My first job actually was a cocktail waitress at the bowling alley. My mother was the bartender there, and at 10 years old, I was cocktailing. So that's my story. Um, um, I also owned Paninis and Bikinis in the West End. Um, I was one of the original owners of the Shorgas Board, the food trucks here in Long Beach. Um, I helped start that up, and now Beach Burger was our first summer um, on the boardwalk. Ralph, my husband, partner. Yes. You know who's in charge now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ralph Anselmo, Stacey and I, uh, you know, like she Hi. said, we've been, we've been business yeah. owners here in, in Long Beach for a while. I owned um, LB Wellness, which was a wellness center on Park Avenue for about 15 years. And then Stacy and I uh, met and we put our minds together and we, we were part of the show before. We had the Long Beach Wellness Cafe truck over there for the first year. And then um, we put our minds together and, you know, with, with our other partner, Greg Lepenner, and um, at uh, Beach Brother. So this first summer was uh, pretty exciting for us, for sure. So all of us businesses on the board were we basically started our own association with the Long Beach Business Association of Boardwalk Concessions. So that's us, Riptides. I'm Gina Bradish. I co-own Riptides with my husband, Brian Bradish. We've been there for four wonderful seasons. Look at the rest. <laughs> 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 Wait, um, Stacey, this yeah. is Karen. Hi. Hi. Uh, before I continue, I'm a stickler for following the rules, and I looked up your association in the New York State did, uh, Department of State Division of Corporations, and I could not find your association listed as a res resident registered corporation. Oh, so that's our little name that we gave ourselves on the boardwalk, the four businesses. Okay. Okay. I just want to make that point clear. Okay. Please. They're not a no problem. consolidated. They're not a You're not okay. a, a registered trade association. Right. You're just a We basically right. wanted to come here unified and, you know. Oh, it's So basically we're coming here to talk to you this evening about introducing or starting the process of alcohol sales on the boardwalk. I know that in years past it was introduced and it unfortunately turned out to be a circus act to say the Do least. Do you remember what year that was? It was 2017. 2017, I think it was in February. So there's a lot of things that need to be said and of course people are automatically gonna go for the negative but coming from a business perspective, it's the number one question that you're asked is where can I get a cocktail? Where can I get a beer? And to direct people to the Allegria or to the establishment on New York Avenue just isn't fair. Like what do they have that we don't have? And it's very hard in a business atmosphere to serve eggs, breakfast burritos, tacos, and make that money back while serving high quality food. Nobody serves popcorn, hamburgers, and I mean, they serve beautiful hamburgers that are gourmet. We're not a McDonald's, we're not a Nathan's. We're trying to bring the food cuisine here to a higher level. And we're competing not only with businesses internally, we're competing with all of the beach concessions throughout the island. Robert Moses, Far Rockaway, Rockaway Beach. People have the choice now to go to other places, so why can't they come to Long Beach and have clams and a glass of beer? Why can't they do it respectfully? Why do we have to say, no, in Long Beach you can't do this, but we're gonna charge you $15 to get on the beach, and maybe you should drag a cooler behind you and we won't ask any questions. So I think that it's really a topic to start talking about, to make what's fair for every other business that's least rented and owned in the city of Long Beach, to allow us the opportunity to sell business, uh, our business to sell alcohol sales as well. I mean, our season is super short, and we're basically here asking for the opportunity to just a fair share, a fair chance, like every other business in town, um, to sell beer and wine. Um, some of the economic impacts, positive, would be it would increase our yearly sales and it offset our fixed costs. We'd be able to employ local residents year-round. We would secure year-round positions. Um, we also aid in um, the increased sales of beach passes. Um, you know, we um, we would cross prom promote all businesses. We'd be we'd have more money to contribute, donate, and sponsor to more community events. 
Um, the competitive advantage would be we can compete with neighborhood cities and state beaches and beach clubs to help you know, build the community. Um, our concessions now become full service establishments. We can grow our client base. We could offer more special events. Can you stop there? Sure. Can you tell me what you, give me an example um, of the special event. Um, either a fundraiser. I mean, catering. Yeah. I just any which way to build revenue. Or just, just that this may be a question to, to you. When you first had done these business plans with Jack was the city manager, and there was the presumption it was going to happen. I brought the RFP with me. Yeah. It says it. What What was your guesstimate on what percentage of the sales would be the alcohol? In any business, you're going to do 40, 60, 6, uh, 50, 50. Your, your alcohol is making up for a lot of well, the Well, it's a high margin. It's right. a high right. margin. So 40% so plus potentially of, of, your, of your, your sales. Your sales, okay. The, pro um, the problem that I, um, that I see with this, to so you know, is <coughs> leasing, you're, you're all leasing space from the city. Correct. Correct. Right. And the access on the boardwalk, um, I think the liability problem is a little bit, um, I think it's $3 million is what is in the lease. So would you consider $50 million or something like that? Well, I, I'm sorry, can I jump in? What, what um, I mean, I think it should be fair what other restaurants in town are paying I don't know for insurance. $50 million I've been in the restaurant business, like I said, well over 30 years. Well, well, I ran huge nightclubs. So 50 million is, is a number that I never heard of. Okay. I mean, that's like way out there. Okay, 10 million. I mean, 5 million is standard for like high volume nightclubs. Okay. But, um. The state park only has 2 million on theirs. Which state park? Jones Beach, right? Oh, Moses. Moses. That's they, a different, different environment. But that way, at least. The park, and this has been this is a busy area. Um, for beer, wine, and liquor? Beer, wine, and frozen drinks. So that's liquor, right? Yes. So, so beer and wine is one permit, and liquor expands the permit, right? Correct. So, so you want to put a full, 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 full. full SLA? Yes, e e even if it was just beer and wine, it's still, you know, you have to go through the whole SLA process. But no, I think she's asking, oh, yes. does frozen drinks include full bar? So in other words, yes. somebody so wants like a rum and coke or, or a gin and tonic. I mean, what we came up with would just be a frozen drink. Okay. We'd well, all I'm have more or less kind of the same energy. Yeah. Um, the costs associated with our concessions, basically we have, we're paying bills year round. Um, we have the rent. The mercantile license is a yearly license. Um, we pay our fire alarms there monthly. We're paying it every month. We're not open. Security cameras, we're paying it. Our computer system, our insurances, our liability, the workers' comp disability are all things that we pay monthly, whether we're open or not. The phone, uh, the fire exhaust system is yearly. The Board of Health is yearly. And I think sanitation in Long Beach, we pay three quarters of the year. Um, you pay the rent annually? The rent is, I'm not sure if all of the concessions are paid the same way. Yes, it's a yearly rent, but some of them have different breakdowns. How, but yes, it's a, year, it's a yearly rent. Um, due to the recent environmental initiatives of NASA County and respecting Long Beach's eco-coastal mission, the cost of doing business has gone up drastically. In order to reduce our carbon footprint and meet these demands, our supplies have increased. Um, our paper goods are all eco. We have no plastic. Um, I mean, they're, you know, we're doing our part, but to do our part costs money. Can I just jump yeah. back? Since now you'll be doing the kids that work there, are they going to be able to work there? You have to be 18 to serve liquor in New York State. But you can still have kids working. Yes, as long as there's a supervisor on each shift. 
I mean, I, I just want to state something. I don't know if any of you have been to the beach from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, Monday through Thursday in the summertime, but there's swarms of people with their red cups playing volleyball, and I, I, I listen, I'm there for everyone, have a wonderful time, but how unfair is it to watch people do exactly what we can do in a safe, controlled atmosphere right in front of you? And they don't really have to do anything. And why, why is someone gonna to come to me to buy a taco if I can't provide them with a beer? Hey, we'll just go down the block and go to Stop and Shop and buy our beer and buy our sandwiches and we're good to go. On, on, the, on the last go around, you guys had developed a plan like you know people wouldn't take it outside, the, wouldn't take a, because stuff would be in cups, not bottles, right. and they wouldn't take it past the boundary mm -hmm. of yes. the, the concession and all that other stuff. Are you gonna, Absolutely. Re yes. introduce some measures like that? Of course. Yes. You know, it, so it, it, basically, it, they would be drinking in a controlled area, in so our area. So how much do you do that, say, every time? So so the, the seats are outside on the boardwalk. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have it on the boardwalk. Oh, okay. Anything on the boardwalk is controlled by the ocean beach, by okay. the ocean beach park. So in this, in this setback, back. I've been told that it's not the ocean beach park. We've also, I spent, another $8,000 doing drawings to build a deck on the east side. When we first took this project over, we wanted, we did, I think Mr. Bender would one time have seen it. I have engineered drawings in here. And John, I know you've seen them. I was asked, instead of making a 50-foot deck, make a 30-foot deck so it doesn't go past the showers. I spent $8,500 in drawings and still willing to build a $40,000 deck, and which becomes the city's property in six years when our contract is over, to have the right to be able to sell beer, wine, and frozen drinks in a controlled area where people would have it. And um, it, it was a very big expense to, to build this thing. I mean, it cost me a quarter million dollars to build reptiles. Okay, so it would be inside. It. So for example, like Beach Burger, we have the, the rail, right. and our tables are inside. Right. So it wouldn't go past. Just like any other restaurant, or if you're in the mm -hmm. West End, you know, the windows are open and you could drink in the window, right. but you can't have your beer out the window. Do you anticipate, will people have to buy food to also be able to buy alcohol? Can someone just come up and buy No, I mean, I think someone should be able to buy a beer. Okay. Um, okay. Um, our commitment to serving responsibility yields with the following goals. National Restaurant Safe Serve Alcohol Program, the New York Zero Tolerance Law, Persons under 21 are prohibited from consuming, purchasing, and possessing alcohol beverages. Um, the Alcohol Beverage Control Center, you know, training. We'd always have a ship supervisor. And these are basically the New York State SLA regulations. Um, the TIP certification, uh, we'd have, you know, if need be, we could put security on, you know, if we need be. Um, the five step ID uh, verification. Uh, process and we basically would limit unlawful consumption of beer wine and other alcohol on the beach and it would, it would be served in our controlled areas. You're close to the school, so is, are you within that fire? Yep. The Catholic Oh, the Catholic school. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. And the SLA has I mean, in the short of it, for a restaurant nowadays to be profitable, you need you need the cushion. I mean, I am the biggest fan of every restaurant in town. I mean, I our hobby is Saturday night eating all over Long Beach. I mean, even the bakeries now had to expand upon. They just need that extra cushion. <laughs> and it's delicious. I mean, we just want to work with the council. We just want to see what the council is really looking for us to provide for you that we can even have this opportunity to go through this. Because, you know, it's worth asking for. It's fair because everyone else in the city of Long Beach can have it. If they don't have it, they can have the option of having it. And we're on the boardwalk. Like, this is where tourists come. This is what they I mean, do. we are the face. Would, would, it expand, uh, board board. would it expand your season too? Absolutely, 100%, yeah. I mean, we would get probably all of October, November. We would have April. I mean, four or five o'clock, 
on the beaches. Ed Edwards, I can only speak for Edwards, is a mass exodus. Mass exodus. People are leaving to either get that train to go back to the city, try to find somewhere else. They're not coming to sit at, I mean, people do come and sit at the concession stands, but the constant questions that's drilled from 11 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night is, can I have a beer? And we have to tell them to go one block up to the other. I mean, we have to send people from our business to another business. That's only a block away from each of our businesses. And we all agree that you can open, they can open the window there? They have the side seating on the west side of the... If, if, if we were to do it, I mean, obviously, you know there's going to be some naysayers that are going to come out for this. Um, If we did it, and we did it on a, let's say, a two-year trial basis, would would you be okay with something Absolutely. like that? Absolutely, yes. Um, that so way to prove it, the a program could work? But then you'd have the license. Aren't you licensed for three years? Um, I believe, no, 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 I think it's two years. Two years? I think New York State is two years. I mean, I can check up. Because I remember sure. it was three years, years ago. Yeah, I think they changed it. That every, it's, a, it's only a two-year license now, I'm pretty sure. Would you yeah. be years. Would you be also agreeable if, and I don't want to cut you off, John, but um, um, there's a quality of life committee that is um, basically. Part of the West End. Well, that's, that's in West End, but. But, but let's say, so is Grand Boulevard, to almost. Would you be? Well, that's the West End. Well, I mean, they have, they, have they, have they have an interesting system in place that might be a good transfer. What, what they do is they go, bar owners in the West End when they're applying for liquor licenses. Right. And, they, and they just, they basically come to a, an MOU with each other on, you know, how they'll treat the neighbors right. and, and, you know, we're, we're not going to have 200 decibel music blaring at 1 o'clock in the morning. It, it's, I mean, our, it's our, our, our night, you know, isn't that late. Um, Quite frankly, it's, it's a handshake yeah. agreement type of thing. Yeah, but what they will do then is, if they come to agreement with the with the locals, then the this the civic association will actually write a letter of support to the SLA right. for the license, mm -hmm. saying we've worked with the owner. The owner is, you know, very amicable to work. Has worked with us and has put assurances in place that you know the the residents' interests will be protected. Things like that, and it's it's been very successful so far in the West End. Um, so that might, I, I know you saw that, maybe that's yeah. something that, that well, just- Well, when you see the volume of activity- And it's nothing unreasonable. And, and again, you're not staying open until four right. in the morning, no. like, no. like the bars in the West End. Yeah, I mean, that's what I mean. I mean no, so many issues wouldn't even apply to you guys. Building. Right, right. So, I mean, I, I think also it needs to be, there are a lot of people that don't really know what goes into this, and there's a lot of people who think it's a negative impact, but we're putting our livelihood on the line. I'm not willing to lose everything because there was a fight, because there was an accident. I'm putting everything there, so you better believe I'm going to cater to every situation that comes about to make sure that it's conducted like grown-ups. We're not, we're not looking to have frat parties. This is adults who know how to responsibly drink while eating. So it's, it's, it's done correctly. It's basically just building on the experience and trying to be more profitable. Karen, you have a question? No, I, you know, I, I know what the lease rates are. I pay a lot of lease, you know, and I mean, I think it's, you know, it's always an issue about alcohol and, and you know, open containers and things of that nature, not making a festival thing, but, you know, obviously the city needs the vendors that are renting our concessions to be successful so we continue to take in revenues to help support the beach, you know. And I'm telling you, the boardwalk never looked better than it did. I mean, this summer, I mean, we were all out seven days a week, 10, 14 hours a day. And uh, in all, I mean, all the businesses, um, the feedback from the community. I mean, we got how many, comp I mean, thousands of compliments of just how the Long Beach boardwalk basically like, turned the new leaf. Would you look to um, extend your hours to go a little later or something? Or I mean, because you guys are typically closed down by what eight? No, no, no. I mean, eleven o'clock on the weekends. I mean, if we could sell yeah. ice cream late at night, you know, we were trying to make a dollar any which way right. we, you know, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was... Clock, and that, that becomes an issue. Yeah, yeah. 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 we talked about yeah. Yeah. that. Yeah. We're happy close to It's a city expense. Because you're required by the Department of Health to have yes. an, an open bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. When you're open. So the city would have to leave the bathrooms open to whatever time. I mean, there are a lot of so again, families that on board with 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night looking for ice cream. I mean, there are a lot of families. Right. We just have to see, again, then if there's a cost to the city for <laughs> overtime to keep someone that late, Definitely. there might have to be something worked out if we did it. Wayne and I have had several conversations about that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Yes. Would we be able to just have one agreement with the, each of the each of the um, establishments, like the same agreement, like five times, so we don't get special deals here and there, and this one's got to stay later, and that one, just to keep it simple? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's why we try to make our coalition or association or, yeah, I mean, we basically, are each other's backbone. I mean, who runs out of ice? Who runs out of cups? I mean, you know. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And we weren't prepared for a presentation. <laughs> you guys got any questions? No, no. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Zoning board and uh, ethics. 
and all the different and, and, ethics and, and boards. And the ethics, well, is the city council point the ethics? Yes. yes. Okay, the ethics board, which doesn't exist actually, right? Well, it's on paper. Well, it does have it, it's on paper, right, but it hasn't met in years. Yeah, no, but those members have been reached out to, and five of them were interested, but uh, yeah. well, um, I think they only meet when they're given an issue. Right. So. Yeah. That's so. Yeah. Where I, that was that well, was there could have been times when they may have sh they should have met. Well, you know, what, Mrs. Karen, what would really what would really help in um, with some of these board and, and committees is what we're doing with the audit committee. Right. Um, is basically having a charter which goes into the responsibilities of the committee. I think there's some summary uh, format in the charter for some of the committees, yes. but I think. If we had a charter for each one and basically laid out the rules, that could be really helpful. Because like basically the ethics committee should be going over a lot of stuff, but we haven't outlined it and the charter would help with that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I guess there's, um, you know, th there's, there's two different questions in play here. One is, um, Changing the charter so the city council appoints all the senior leadership positions in the city, um, and then the second one is also all those various committees and boards and commissions. Um, do we also have the city council appoint those people as well? Um, Well, let's start with the first question. How about the, the, all the commissioners and department heads? Let's start with that one. Was it by a simple majority or more than that? Because it's not stated. Is it just assumed? The majority of the council. Yes, majority. Majority of council, so in this case, okay. it would be three. Just, I, I, think it's a, I think it's a good idea that the city council have approval over all those uh, uh, commissioners and, and department heads, but just one thing to remember that when you appoint somebody by resolution, you need to dismiss them by resolution also. That's a good point. Okay, good to know. Um, uh, I also, I just remember going to a lot of city council meetings, and just because you have a majority of a three doesn't really mean that that could work. So I know that this Had fun to switch back to the city council, but I'm still sort of on the fence of like how this is going to work. It's a lot, just like this year. We want to set something up that's going to last past our year, right? So that just if, I, if, I, if you don't mind me just chiming in, sure. I realize I'm a short timer and I've been new to this, but. This is the first I'm seeing this whole thing. Right. This is no, the, yeah. We, we, yeah, no, and I, and I understand that. Uh, I had, had had prepared for the entire council, new incoming council, a, uh, a legal document to explain how to exchange, you know, how to change the charter commission, uh, how to change the charter, and uh, that possibly a lot of these things will require a charter commission. The only thing I would, I would suggest that I, I, I think for your own benefit, sometimes when you change something, you're not sure of the unintended consequences. Like, I mean, this first item, I think, is clear whether the uh, city manager recommends any of these high positions or uh, or the council approves these positions. I know when I interviewed for the position of, uh, of public works commissioner, uh, after Jack interviewed me several times, I did meet separately with the council twice, two of the council members and two of the other council members. Uh, I only did meet with one council member, and I think that's actually a good procedure. I think the council should definitely be on board with who, who the commissions are at various departments. But I would suggest if, if, if you're going to proceed with these kind of changes to appoint a, uh, a charter commission, and obviously there's yeah. going to be public involved in it, but I would recommend to reach out to some, some former council members, number one, that you're comfortable with and that you trust to look at some of the changes you want to make and have them part of the commission. And in addition to reach out to 
a former, uh, somebody who's a former city manager who's been here for I quite have, some time, somebody like, been, yeah. somebody like an Eddie, yeah. somebody who spent a lot of years here, just to kind of bounce things off of and say, you know, we want to make this change before you make the change so that they can kind of give you some history as to why the charter was written that way. And then just so, because a lot of times when you change things, and, and I understand you're trying to change things to prevent problems or based on other past problems, but sometimes as a knee-jerk reaction, you make a change, and then what happens is you have unintended consequences down the road because you didn't, you know, nobody really thought it out. So it might not be a bad idea to get some people on that commission that, that have some idea, have been here, have served as council members, have served as city managers, and, uh, and certainly could give, just give you some insight as to why things are written the way they are, that's all. That would be my only suggestion. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> trying to help, that's all. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I just have a, I just have one, go ahead, Karen. No, I mean, I'm fine with the city council putting the uh, department heads. Okay. Well, like I said, that's how a lot of the municipalities yeah. yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. So, um, Keep, keep in mind that I went through a lot of this charter, and um, when I saw Village, when I saw Mayor, I, obviously to me, nobody's looked at this for decades, 50 years maybe? I don't know. Well, David? Uh, yeah, well, in, well in 2010, I did reach out to General Code to do an editorial analysis and to also redo our code book. Because normally they recommend about every dozen or so years that you go through and do a code, code revision. Right. The last formal code revision we had was in 1974. Ooh. And that's the code we're kind of using right now. Um, we went through the process and um, we, have, we have the editorial analysis. I'll be happy to send that document out to you. Um, Is that an editorial analysis from 74 or from? No, it's based on the 74 code. They they did an editorial analysis, made recommendations for things that they found that were inconsistent and that needed right. to change. Mm -hmm. The focus of it was more on the code than the charter. They did find some, some issues okay. with the charter, but nothing really functional as we're talking about here. Yeah, just a couple of things, like like you said, it refers to the mayor instead of the city yeah. manager, things, things of that nature. But at, at the time, you know, we started the process and it kind of died right. with the Corporation Council. I did not have the support of, of the Corporation Council at the time. And having the uh, the attorneys look at it was is, is a crucial part of it. Correct. And it just kind of it, it kind of died at that point. Okay. Yeah, we, we had uh, uh, we had legal help with with this. This this wasn't done in a vacuum. Um, uh, John said that this for us to team to be able to appoint the department heads, does that require a commission or not? Because there's three instances of where you can change the charter, right? Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be a commission. No, it, so, it could be direct legislative action. It could be um, setting up a charter commission. Yeah. And then if there's a referendum that you could put like a big item out to the, to the public, if there's a certain amount of signatures, you want to put it on like a ballot. So, and there's certain changes that require a referendum. Right, that was certain like when they had to vote, whatever it was. Right, the last one so we had was go back to a mayoral system. Right, that's happened twice that I've known, known of, and it's failed both times. That, yeah, okay. two, that, 2007 was the last time we had, we had a referendum for replacing city manager with a mayor. It went after a referendum and it failed. Okay. So, Mike, what was the first, the first instance, again, the first instance you said? Well, I'm referring to uh, John yep. Rolando's uh, memorandum, I think it was November 20th, I, I think, I'm not sure, but uh, that, that just so you know, that was not my memorandum, that was a memorandum to me because I asked for specific questions from oh, uh, Corporation, Corporation Council, Council. Megan, so that, right. that's there, and, and the reason I asked Megan to do that, Megan worked for New York City, uh, was fairly new here, and felt that she didn't have any biases one way or another. So I guess I just to go through a group of questions that keep coming up in, about the charter uh, for my for my benefit as sure. well as any new council members coming in. And I kept it. Sorry. Yeah, so I sent it to all five. 
council members and put in three new council members. So, so I'm, yeah. I'm broken down into two, two items, and the first item is, do we want to be able to appoint department heads? And then and then after that, can we do that without a commission, right? Well, we, we can. I think John's suggesting, though, if, if we want to do that, to, to get feedback. Okay. That, you know, I have a public hearing. Well, no, there would be a public hearing okay. if you're going to do a charter change. I right. think John's suggesting it just as a, a kind of a due diligence kind of right. thing. Right, just to understand. And, and you know, I, I mean, like the first one to me is, is very benign. I mean, in all the in municipalities I've worked for, generally whoever the village administrator, the city manager was, would recommend uh, senior level positions to the council or the right. board, and the board right. would make the final decision they would meet them and, and basically that's right. the way I went through the, to become the position of Commissioner of Public Works I think that's a that's a good thing that doesn't you know say but I'm you know I haven't a chance to look through yeah we only have to, we, this only came out yeah today. this is only so, this is 60 pages the first time yeah, 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 no, 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 no. we're but, not making yeah, doing anything like but, this but I'm just saying going forward as a recommendation on all these changes it's good to have some input from people that have been here, have done this. Yeah. I, listen, I've only been the acting city manager for, I don't know, three months, and you know, every day I'm learning something new, but um, it would be helpful to have somebody like an Eddie Eaton who was here for a long period of time, or some other former city manager that you may be the group, the, the five council members trust, in addition to other council members that served for a long time that the group trust, to just sit down with and say, you know, these are some of the things we're looking at, you know, to understand the history of why they're in here, and if you change them, what might the impacts be, the unintended consequences, that's all. And then the second question was all those <coughs> huge number of weird boards and commissions, many of which don't exist, uh, you know, or should, some of them should exist. Well, no, that's 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 a separate oh. topic. But um, do we want do we want the city council appointing the members of all those? Well, I, I, as well. Just, because, just because the city council appoints them doesn't mean that the city manager doesn't do all the work. Oh, of course, it. of course, yeah. Like, for it to be under the the the, the, uh, the members of committee or an existing committee are vetted by the city manager right. and proposed to the city council and the city council has a final vote on whether they serve on the uh, committee or not. Like Karen and John, there's something that we got um, from Ray Kalnitsky on January 14th and he said, Karen, the spreadsheet looks good, but then he went through and listed about 12 items right. on here the Emergency Management Board, and so on and so forth. Some of the charter and some of the code of ordinances. My point is, it says Parking Commission and Traffic Commission. They probably didn't know they existed because there was not an issue with parking and traffic, but that may come up where we would want people to. Yeah, that's, that's the next conversation that, after the charter. Yeah, that's okay. the next conversation. Uh, the other thing, I mean, uh, I did go through, I managed to get through this on the train Right. I don't know how I did it, but um, there, there was just a couple of uh, minor tweaks on uh, page seven, uh, where it talks about the city manager uh, that he can have a, a, a contract. He or she. Uh, correct. He or she. Though it says he in here mostly. It's a very sexist document. Yeah. Uh, I guess when it was written, it was. Is written up there was right, there was no view of women being a city manager. A lot of this, I think, came from the village charter, which was originally done in 1914. Right. Right. Oh, well, right. right. So, but it talks about the city right. manager right. having a... And then, it, and then it was amended to be the city charter in 1923. Right. Okay. And then, it, but it's written that the... Uh, and I'll email these to you, but uh, the, the city manager can have a contract not to exceed a term of three years, but the problem is we might want to change that if we did this to two years because you don't necessarily want a contract carrying over into a new administration after an election because now you'd have to put a term, uh, you know, termination at will clause in a contract because you don't necessarily want to burden a, a future administration uh, 
with someone if they don't want them. So, so that's a note that we have to make. Yeah, and then um, and then and, uh, also on page seven, the next thing uh, with the uh, the uh, designating or identifying an acting city manager in the absence of the city manager. Um, right now, the city manager designates his own alt mm -hmm. his or her own alternate, but really, well, there's two issues here. So what we've been having for a while is active city managers designating active city managers. That's one issue. But the other thing is, um, it, this is my opinion. That wasn't always like that. Right. It should be the city council who decides who runs the city if the city manages. So the same thing. The city management say, I think it should be what the commissioner of, but it would just then be the council approving that and saying, okay, put that on a file with the clerk that. Um, so you either approve it or you, you right. do not. You know, that th this is the acting city manager in the absence of the city manager. Yeah, up until. Does that, does that have to be done by resolution? Uh, well, no, it would be part law. of the amendment here if we did this. Yes. Local law. Local but law. Up, up, until, up until 77. It was it was designated it, in the absence of the city manager as the city clerk. If the city clerk was not available, it was the corporation council. Right. There was a chain of command. Yeah. There was a chain of command. There was a disagreement between the council and the city clerk at the time, and that's when they changed it to designated designated as by letter. Mm -hmm. That's that's a little bit of the history. Right. But just my opinion, that should be the city council approving that. Right. Well, you know, the, the thing to keep in mind, I think a lot of that also has to do with. Um, if, if you have a situation where the city manager is like, incapacitated yeah, or, or right. leaves, oh, like um, right. like in this case, let's say John had to had to had to leave for Florida or like, like that, yeah. mm -hmm. um, there may not be time for the city council to act to right. put somebody in, in that place. Well, no, no, it would be done on a case so, by case basis. Yeah, it would so be like now, where well, jo John, just, just as an example, to, to give you an example, I think what Jay was talking about is after we become the acting city manager, I need to have somebody in the event that I wasn't going to be Correct. Here, so I had appointed Scott Cannons. Right. Right. Okay, it was the mission of buildings. But there might be a time where, God forbid something happens in my family, I have to leave in an emergency, and Scott Cannons is not available, mm -hmm. right. to try to get the council together in an emergency to say, you know, who's going to take care of things today? And I think that's where the city manager has to have some flexibility to say, you know, if they, if this has come up as an emergency, staff's not available, you gotta, you got to be available to sign these things today. I mean, an emergency, yeah. like, well, like I a mean, declared emergency. I mean, well, but isn't that maybe have it done on You may need a longer chain of command. Right, right. it could just be you have two alternates or but something like that. that. Or that they're, they're allowed to uh, name somebody for a limited amount of time. Yeah. 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 So in that case, like, you would have the, maybe the city manager would have the ability to say, okay, I have the ability to name, you know, Scott Cannons or whoever, at the city manager for a period of, of uh, 30 days. Of 30 days or 10 days without city council approval, so that way we would take care of those situations where we have we need somebody right now. And then if it's going to go any further, then it would require council action. That's that's another way. Because I don't think we're really changing much. It's just mm -hmm. now we're yeah. proving who's that. When, you know that before the let is fine. I, I like David's suggestion that if it goes that past a certain amount of time, then we have waited. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. so, so that's. Uh, we want to make sure we're covered in case we have, in case we have, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. Never I have, have something still on page seven, John. Okay. Um, um, I don't know, I know this is negative language, but I wanted to know if we could have something that um, the city manager has no authority to enter into a contract, or, or even the city council. Wait, no authority to enter into a contract or agreement with an officer except the, or, except for the city manager. Yeah. So that if there's no agreement, no side deals, nobody gets special, special vacation, nothing. Um, I, I was going to, yes, I know what you're trying to learn. That's right. That, that didn't make it in, in here. Um, it may be something as simple as no employee except the city manager can have a contract. I agree. So actually, I'd like to make a suggestion on that. As long as the council is going to pick the key 
the key uh, department heads, like Commissioner of Public Works, Commissioner of you know Police Department, Commissioner of uh, Recreation, if we end up having one of those, Commissioner of Building. I, I think you need to give yourself some flexibility to be able to enter into a contract with those positions because what, what's going to happen is is for an example, when, when I got here, I had four years of experience, uh, but because I was starting with Long Beach, the, based on the CSEA contract, I'd only get 10 days vacation. Okay, I put a, you know, as public works commission with snowstorms and things like that, you put a lot of extra time in. So if you're gonna hire, if you're gonna wanna attract talented people that have experience in these different areas, you may wanna have some flexibility for each one of these positions to be able, as a city council, to enter into a contract with them because you might have somebody who's got you know 25 years experience and is a, you know could be a great asset to the city, but don't want to come here because when they're working already they're getting 20 days vacation. So you may want to give yourself some flexibility where you can write all those things into a contract, particularly for the department heads. I'm just throwing that out there. I think it's a better way to attract more qualified people to come take positions that aren't going to be concerned about the politics changing or right. uh, benefits that aren't going to add up to where they've been. The interesting thing though is that you're, for, the, for the department heads, it, it's an unwritten policy that your vacation is tied to the CSEA. So so that point is, it, it doesn't even matter. That should, have, that should have never been the way it was. And I don't even know if it is that way it was unless it's basically by precedent. No, 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 it, it, it's vacation time and everything like that is tied into the CSEA contract. Yeah, so that, that's the whole point. It's in the, you it's can't, in, the code. in other words, in the, it's in the code. So in other words, you come here with 30 years experience in a professional position or an exempt to be a department head, yeah. you're stuck with the first year starting with 10 days of vacation. You may have 30 years experience and being asked to leave a job where you get 20 days vacation. But you're not just going to take the job. Or well, except, you know, Liz, it, 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 there, when you're in an exempt position, you know you're not working just a 40-hour week. You know you're on weekends, you're answering phone calls during the week. Right. You're, you're never away from from the job. And, and the whole point is just to be to do to be able to have the flexibility to negotiate individually with department heads. You should be able to try to do that so that you can attract the best talent that's out there to help manage your departments. I have a question. Good. Are the, are all department heads exempt? No. 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 That's no. my point. I, yeah, you have some exempt and some not exempt. Well, that's that's the that's the that's yeah. another issue. That's a, that's another whole issue. You, yeah. it's, it's very difficult to, um, uh, as an example, in, in public works. Typically, any other community that I worked for, <coughs> the superintendents of the various departments, water, mm -hmm. uh, street, highway, beach, they would all be non-union employees right. and exempt employees that weren't in the same union of the people they were supervising. Correct. Now I'm not saying, I mean that's the way it's developed here, but it's very difficult for somebody who's in the same union with those employees to Agreed. to supervise them and to, to have managerial control over them. I agree. Uh, I don't know how you correct that, and you know when I talk to these superintendents over time and said, you know, really guys shouldn't be in the union. Uh, I mean there are communities like Garden City where that level of management is in their own union. They have their own, you know, they have their own CSA group, so they're not negotiating with the rank and file, so they still have some authority over. There was an issue up on North Hempstead, mm -hmm. I think, years ago. So, so, I mean, the, but, you know, we're talking about, I'm talking about the major departments, the Commissioner right. of Public Works, right. the Deputy Commissioner, the Commissioner of Recreation, the Police Commissioner, right. uh, the Commissioner of Buildings, Commissioner of Fire Department, those positions. That, those are, you really and I see kind of eye on this. Right, story. Corporation yeah. Council. Yeah. Those are the only really department heads yeah. that are non union. There's only, yeah. presently, there's only 13 exempts in the entire city. Yeah. Everybody else is in the union. Right. Council, uh, council, so the way, so the, way we work, the way to do this is that we actually set a policy for exempt where we give them a, a minimum of 30 days vacation. Yeah. So if you're exempt, But he exempts across the board, right, Karen? Yeah. He, for, for the exempts across the board, I agree. Yeah, if you have a policy 
Yeah. yeah. You can you can you can develop a guide you can develop a guideline, but you have to have a way to attract talent to people to the city. Yes, yes, and that's why we would have at least three weeks or four weeks vacation for professionals. The standard is three weeks. So we would we would go we would say this this many sick days, this many personal days, this many you know, vacation days, and, and that's how it works in the real world. And that's, that's why I'm saying do. have a separate contract. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you would have to decouple it. Yeah. Would be a you would have to decouple it from the CSCA Correct. contract and set up its own uh, criteria. Correct. Right. Yes, and as the professional staff, it should be separate from, from the CSCA. Yeah. There, 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 it shouldn't be just because you're an exec, you get what the CSCA gets. Right. Because it's very different right. roles. Yeah. I agree. All right, uh, we should. Uh, Just a quick thing that, that Ray pointed out, Nassau, because he had come from Nassau County. Nassau County has what they call a prior service credit. That may be something you can institute. That could be. Yeah. Thank you. All right, uh, we sort of covered it some, but uh, like all, all these uh, uh, boards and committees, we got to go through. Obviously, there's a pretty sizable list. Uh, we got to figure out. Uh, which ones we're going to reconstitute? I mean, some of them I don't even know if they apply anymore. It's some just of them. Just, I'm they're just ancient. To, because we're on the architectural review board. That was another one. That was, it's so it was, yeah. The city council is the architectural review board. I and <coughs> never what understood is, what that what I, I, that? I can tell you. I can, okay. I can tell you what it should be. Okay. An architectural okay. review board, if you have a vision, you John, collectively the council, along with the city manager, and you want to not have haphazard buildings going all over the place, three stories, pink, green, blue. You would have a a, a, a generic, I should say generic, somewhat of a design standard. So, for example, if this architecture review board was in effect, when West End Homes raised, they could have said, "Well, you need to put your garage on one side." They could interact. So what the architectural review board currently is, is you, you go into the city manager's office before the city council meeting, there's stacks of documents about yay high on the desk, and three council members have to initial each of them. That's, yeah. that's the zoning board approval. No, 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 that's the architectural review board stuff. We don't do zoning. No, no, I, I think uh, I thought those were applications that were approved by the zoning board needed to sign off by the council. My understanding is those that's the architectural review board sign. Well, if you're, if you're the architectural review board and you haven't looked at anything, you shouldn't be signing. Exactly. Yeah, that's, exactly, that's the point. I, I, I think, don't think I, they That's are. why I don't like I, to sign, I, I I don't sign those. Before, before you say that, I have to double check that because I think those are the zoning board applications that have been approved. Uh, I, I, uh, that's not my understanding. It's, I've well, always. I'll, let's check. I'll, let's, let's let's check. check. I think it's important to check. Yeah, we need to know. But, but I, I just good point. From a political standpoint of view, I don't, I don't think the city council <coughs> or any board of trustees should ever take on the authority of architectural review or planning review or zoning approval because I, it, it creates a, uh, a chance for, for lawsuits and based on yeah, politics. I, you know, no, I, I, I think those agree. are important We're boards to keep separate from the from But the currently, council. it's the five of us on... Yeah, the, the architectural review, review it's, board. It's the five council members, two local architects that can be appointed. Is it? And yeah, I'll, I'll double check on that. I, I always yeah. believe those were zoning board applications that had been heard. Yeah, and needed to be signed off. Okay, I, the architectural I'll, 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 I'll I could be wrong, I, and I yeah. could be wrong too, but yeah. I'll double check. Yeah, this has to be a code change, probably. Can we, oh. can, we, can, we, can we stick to the charter, the, the boards in the context of yes. the charter, and then deal with each individual board as a separate issue? Okay. The next issue? Go. Yeah, well, like I said, we got to decide the. Well, A, whichever ones are reconstituted or ones that are currently there in the overhaul. I mean, what we need, we need a application process so we can put this, open this up. What? But that's not, the point is, we're talking about the code right now, right? Well, no we're, talking, the no, we're talking about boards board and committees. Oh, we're moved on to the boards and committees? Oh, yeah, yeah. we're off the code board. It's, yeah. Why? Do you, do you have another one? I want to go home before midnight. I'm just saying that. That's why we're trying to keep moving. <laughs> You're driving home from Washington tonight? No, it's going to be a little no. long drive. 
No. Um, so the thing is that we're talking about the code, and basically I thought the question was whether or not it's the council that approves or the city manager, uh, the council that appoints or the city manager that appoints. Correct. It depends on the board. It depends, it depends on, on the board. Right, not presently, it depends for example, on For example, you board. have like a, the advisory board for seniors com comprised of nine members appointed by the city manager. And then you go down, architectural review, comprised of all members of city council, city manager may appoint consultants to act as an advisory committee. And it goes on and on. So in certain cases, you may have the city manager and the council appointing Yeah, there may people. be recommendations yeah. from the city council, from the city manager to the city council for final approval by the city council. Right. Uh, and some are just appointed by the city manager and some are just appointed by the city council. Presently. Presently, right. Like the planning advisory board. Advisory board to the Department of Planning consisted, consisting of 11 members to be appointed by city manager and serve at the will of the city manager without compensation. So there's a little bit of... Most of the boards and commissions, the majority of them, are appointed by the city manager with no input from the council. That, that's the issue at hand is, do, do you have where the city manager recommends, you know, and the council approves the members? So should we do, could we do that universally? Would, would that be easier? Uh, no, because the way the chart is written is you got to go in and make the individual changes to the charter and the code of ordinances because right. it's written for individual boards and commissions. Right. So do we want to change it, have them change it? Do we want to? Well, the, it depends on the this board. did change it. So that it's all, it's all appointed by the city council, correct? Correct, that the city council approves it all. So it's pros and cons of that, right? Yeah. Correct. That's the discussion. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Because according to this, I'm still on the Public Safety Commission. And, uh, oh, has not met for several years. Not my fault. I mean, that doesn't mean that the city manager's getting taken out of the loop on it. It's, it's just the city council's going to do the actual approval. Right. But we want to make sure that it's fair. It's and every resident has a chance to. Well, that, that's different. I'm, oh. This is the approval process. The, the next one, which was, if we move on to the next discussion item, was actually how do we open it up so people right. can apply? We need an application process. I, I think some, who was it? Somebody Temple. emailed us an application template. Uh, that was, Mr. Miranda said that, um, something that Mr. Pepper. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, we could create potentially an email address, whatever, committees at longbeachnewyork.gov and I, yeah. have people, uh, or I don't know if you can put it online, make it an online form that people can fill out. That's not good. Have you, Karen, have you looked at that for application yet? I'm not talking about that because it's not, it's the next topic. Oh, oh you still, all right, let's all go right. ahead. I thought you were on, you were ready to move on. Okay. No, no, have, have the four of us agreed that we want all of the, in the code and the charter, where it, whatever committee it is, do we want it all recommended by the city manager and appointed by the council? I do. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, in my opinion, it should be. I, it, it's I, like I, I said, it's just, the, it's just the including county. the council in the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we all agree. All right. Yeah. We're ready for the next topic. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, for these boards to get the commissions to get reconstituted, we obviously we want to open it up to people to be able to apply. So um, I saw Dave shaking his head yes, and we could do like a, uh, some kind of form where people could fill it in. We have an option. We could create an address, or if we can do an online form or something, we could. We'll have to do that we'll, offline. Yeah, usually we'll create we, we an email address. Yeah, we can update whatever we need to do and. City of Glen Colbeck had like kind of an interesting oh. thing on their, their website. Oh, okay. the I took that form that I saw that came and I totally redid it. And I oh, sent okay. it to you guys because oh, okay. you didn't have any of your names on it as council, council members. No, oh, that's, well, we changed all the council members' names. Then I didn't get the updated one. You didn't get the right form then. I didn't okay. get the right form. No. Uh, so, can, how about we just start with, you know the, the list that the Excel file that we have? Yeah. Can we just start with that and um, basically have 
done and his team coordinate, you know, maybe even trying to get the Herald to do a free ad or something, say, you know, or a newsletter or an email that we're soliciting for all of us. Well, we can we direct. We can have Gordon put together some kind of. We just met today yeah. with the new editor of the Herald, uh, uh, Jim okay. Bernstein. No relation to uh, the Bernstein from Woodward and Bernstein, but um, uh, he was an old Tuesday reporter, and he came in and spent about an hour with us, and certainly we could reach out to him and see what we can get done. Because I think that the Public Safety Commission should be... Uh, what is that for? We have a priority well, I mean, on we could spend the day just talking about this. Like yeah. there's, there's a, a, a civil defense committee or board or whatever it's called. I'm guessing probably hasn't been in existence for 1940. Right, but you might want to merge that in, for example, with the public safety. Yes. Yeah. Just as a poor example. There, there may be a lot of committees you want to Exactly. They, some of these things may never come to life again because they just. And, and there may be some. Do we need committees? Newer, we need committees? newer committees that you need based on changes and you know and things that have gone on. Right. I'm surprised I didn't see a horseman or a committee in there or something. But can we decide, like, by going through the Excel sheet, which committees we want John and his team to focus on, and then yes. set a target that we want these committees all re re you know, by a certain date? Yes. I want. I want well, the sheet. Just one here. So I, I, I think you should start, and I hate to go out of order because we did get three applications for the ethics. So okay, let's start at the beginning. Okay. You want to go? You want to go through? Okay. So you want to go through all twenty pages of committees? We'll go, what time is it? Because it's ten to nine. Five pages. You guys have five pages. Oh, we yeah. have the we have the yeah. oh. this guy, You want to use that one? Oh, you got it. Oh, well, that, that was the, what uh, Gina updated. That's the what Karen's referring to, I think. Yes. So. Karen made it online. This way, you guys want to say. Oh, I'm looking at this with me. You're looking at the same product. I, I, I could. I want to step out of this one. I don't do all this. Oh. So, if we start, the advisory board is an active committee, should we work up? Should we add that to John's list? The advisory board for seniors? Yes, it's the first one. Uh, on page one, that's, that's a very active committee. It has to do with Magnolia. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. They have, but there's no term expiration, so, there yeah. is, so that needs to be in there. Well, or is it at the pleasure of the, it probably now would be the pleasure of the city manager, okay. right? Oh, yeah, it starts at the pleasure of the city okay. manager. So, Going back one discussion, if we change the charter, it would, I guess, be technically that serves at the pleasure of the city council. Mm -hmm. uh, then we would work on charters and all that stuff to say if, if we wanted a term or not. Right. But, but while working on charter changes, simultaneously, Miranda could, and his team could work on the applications and vetting everything. Well, right. And, and, and these committees themselves could probably develop their own charters and stuff. <clears throat> Yeah. The, the city to develop, yeah, yeah. and the Corporation Council's office. Uh, all right, the Architectural Review Board is currently the council plus uh, uh, considering two licensed architects and three citizens. We can table that for now. Yeah, yeah. got to figure that out. The Arts Council, Arts that's Council. obviously up and running, up and running. Doing, well. doing well. Doing well. Board of Assessors, is there a Board, board of Assessors? Yes, yeah, okay. Right and we sit as the uh, Board of Assessor for you. Yeah. So that's, would, that's a tax assessor and two associate assessors. So we would open that up? Or, right? No, it's just. Well, they need certain it's specific not, training. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. You gotta be careful with what boards that need well, special training. Right. 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 Well, it says also associate assessors, so it's well, like the public. Christy, two people right. in your office are. Uh, uh, Janet and Christine. Janet and Christine. DPW. Yeah, so it wouldn't be open to the public in that case. Yeah, you need a right. technical background on that. So on the first page, we're looking at the senior, the advisory board for seniors and arts council. Now we're on to the second page. Board of ethics. Do we want to open that up? Yes. Yeah, everybody's asking about that one. Next is the Board of Examiners of Electricians. Do you want to deal with that now or no? No, because I think that's 
more yeah, of that's, that's, that's technical. That's the building department right. and public works. Yeah. You need licenses. There may, Does that, there may that be, be, Yes. 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 And so does the board of plumbers. Okay. Right. Uh, do you have to? Do you? Should there be a a residence on there? Just no. No, no, that's very technical. Yeah, they have to right. approve plumbing license, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. license okay. for both those boards. Next. I, and I actually sit on both of them. Yeah. Yes, both okay. There's a board of fire commissioners. I think we should revisit that. Yeah, that one, it says one member of the city council designated by city council. So just keep that in mind. Okay. All right, so we need to figure that one out. I think Josh got the tree board for now, right? Yeah, I just found that out the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, civil defense, you want to just wait to table that? Yep. Yeah. Maybe that should be changed to like a homeland security one or something. Yeah, civil defense, civil. I just, I have, I have it actually up on my screen. It, it was a product of the code from 57, and the last time somebody we reviewed it was in 72. Okay. Right. That's when people were building bomb shelters. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's probably time to change that to like a homeland security type committee. Yeah. Right, or maybe like I said, you merge it into the public safety committee or something. Or right. OEM or, yeah. or, yeah. or, or OEM, yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah. So, Silver Service, you want to revisit, right? No, but I think we should ask and be taken out of the charter. Yeah. 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 Wait, can, uh, they can't. Now, can Silver Service, you got to be very careful with There's very specific laws that guide oh, okay. Civil Service and what we do, and we're fortunate that so we're can not. Can we just add, just, mm, at least acknowledge that we've acknowledged it. Well, in, in, in civil uh, service commission, you need to have. No, no, no. I'm not saying to put anyone on it, but I'm saying every year this commission will remain vacant at this time. No, they actually do no, this. That, no, they, no, they actually have a commission. They yeah. have minutes. They, they yeah. Have, yeah. I went to the meeting. Civil defense. No, no, civil no, service. Civil service. service. No, I thought you said civil service. Oh, civil defense. Oh, civil defense, oh, civil defense is different. Civil that's, service is that's, that's a big difference. Big difference. No, we're talking about civil service. No, no, I'm not talking about civil service. I'm talking about civil defense. If I said civil service. Oh, you said civil service. I'm sorry. I apologize. No, I apologize. I thought you said civil service. Um, that's what I, I did. did. That's what yeah. I did. So, back to civil. Because it doesn't exist, can we remove it from the charter? Which or civil, civil, civil defense. defense. I guess I probably. Think, I think Miranda, John Miranda was saying that we might want to reconstitute that committee as a, 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 a Homeland Security right. Committee, so we would discuss that at another meeting. If I did that, if we had a Homeland uh, Security Committee, would that help with grants or anything potentially? Yeah. It, it might, because you know, with most of the FEMA grants, the, the final approval for us comes from Homeland Security, New York State. So, so, maybe, so, so maybe we, we spend a lot of time, so it may not be a bad, bad thing to have. So, so uh, again, all want. I want to just say is that we should, because it's been vacant forever, just acknowledge that we have acknowledged there is a civil defense, whatever we're going to change it to, in the charter. Mike Tagby pointed out to me on West Park Avenue actually still is one existing civil defense shelter yeah. in one of the buildings, that and the sign is still up. Yeah, that, Triangle with the black and yeah. yellow. Remember that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Place. So, so maybe okay. we need to look. Maybe it might make sense to, to repurpose it as a homeland security committee. Okay. And that would help with grants and stuff like that. Well, I, it may. I don't. I'm, I'm just thinking right. because of the amount of time we deal with, uh, with yeah. homeland security. I agree too. Who let this thing? I did. I would just say that since, since uh, Miranda doesn't have enough to do. So every month that we first meeting, along with the email that Greg sent for the other non-active committee, uh -huh. if, if John Miranda, if you can come up with some recommendations on how to consolidate those committees, does that make sense? That consolidate which ones now? Uh, civil defense. Civil defense and public safety. Public yeah. safety. I can do that. Or change civil defense to homeland security. Well, you can't be homeland security. Does, he looks like he needs to be pieces.
re reconstituted. That would or eliminated. Or eliminated, yes. So because, you know, the, on, on Greg's list it says emergency management board. Well, to me that has to do with civil event, could do with civil defense too. And John would look at both of them and then say, hey, this is the best way we could eliminate one or consolidate and get the most money from, from Greg. All right. Um, so, like I said, Civil Service Commission, it was next on the list I'm looking at. Okay, I'm okay. Uh, uh, that obviously exists, but every, let me see here, I guess everybody's terms except one, they're, yeah, two, two of the three are past uh, their expiration date, their holdovers, so uh, I guess, well, if I do it now, we could have another discussion yeah. if we want to swap. Uh, I would like to minute. I'll request the minutes of the meeting. This way, you can look at what we do, and then you guys can decide. I don't know if you guys remember, but like six or eight years ago, we got slammed for the for our civil service commission and stuff we weren't following. It was like worse than the state. So I think the thing is that we, we need to we need to get some new people on this committee. Okay. Robin Lynch is the secretary, so yeah. they want to get the units. There's a humane commission. Commissioner. Commissioner, sorry. It's usually the police department. Uh, I don't know if that means that person goes out and pets dogs or. I don't know what a humane what? commissioner is. I think when they had horses on the beach, <coughs> they were just making sure that you know, everything was done right. You know what a humane commissioner part. does? No. Maybe that's something you want to you got any idea what a humane commissioner does? I think we have, we have an Apple control officer now. Yeah. So I yeah. think that probably can replace anything. I think that helped yeah. to do what we used to want to talk ourselves. Okay, oh, so, okay. So maybe this is something yeah. that just gets eliminated. Yeah. I think I'm going to answer this. Can I just interrupt for a second? Yeah. Do we have any need for the controller for the rest of the meeting? I don't no, think no. so. Okay, I'm going to let her go then if you don't Thank mind. Thank you, Ian. I'll give them what you gave me and we'll, we'll discuss it. At Sure. Some other time I'll discuss with you guys. Okay. If you want to move the order, I can stay a little longer. And, uh, no, I don't want to hold you up. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. I'll explain it to them. Okay. Um, I can email it to Karen. I don't think that uh, she got a copy of it. Uh, Karen, did you get an email from me today about the budget and the, everything else and all that other stuff for payroll? Oh, let's do that. Oh, yeah, let's do that. What? What? Yes. Yes. yes, you know what? Yeah, you have it. Two minutes. This will be quick. Sure, we're we're jump. changing topics just for two minutes so we can get you know, uh, the uh, the council approving all contracts over. Right now it's 20000 lowering that down to 2000 which is in line with what the county's done. Um, so. Uh, is that doable? I don't think that's a good idea. Because I, I think what's going to happen is sometimes there's things that come up, like we'll get a, a um, as an example, we had a wall down at the pool that's separating, okay? And that's kind of a, you know, it's a dangerous situation. We want to hire us an engineering firm for four or $5,000 to come in and, and take a look at that. We can move quickly on that. Now we have to wait till a council meeting to approve that. I, I think lowering the requirement for council approval that contracts out of 2000 just is going to prolong getting things done. Is this based completely on non professional services or is this technically for some type of yeah. contract? I'm trying to figure out what the, because some of these Department of Public Works. Well, when county did it, it's all contracts now. Any? Because it, 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 they established an office, right? They, they hired someone yes. to review all the contracts. Yeah, like um, an inspector. General or something. So I think that that's done, and I could be wrong, but I think that that office uh, reviews contracts after they entered, sort of, not, not not before the contract is entered into, but of all the contracts that the, the county entered into, go through that office and review. But uh, that office, and they make sure that all appropriate procurement procedures <coughs> were followed. Right. Um, as a result of that. Because um, presently our procurement policy allows us to, for the purchasing department, to enter into contracts up to $10,000 with certain provisions, 
both purchasing supplies and things of that nature, where we, we're actually going to ask in a new procurement policy, the present limit on public works uh, professional services is 6000 before we have to go to an RFP. We're going to ask to change that to 10000 to go to an RFP. There's a lot of little projects that come up where we need engineering assistance during the course of the year. And again, it's just really Joe and I that are here. So, you know, the, the whole idea is to try to be able to keep things right. moving to get work done. I'm, I'm not think, sure, I, unless I misunderstand what you're asking. Oh, well, uh, I think 10 grand is more reasonable. What's that? 10 grand. 10 grand is more reasonable. Um, so I, I think I, that th this can be um, reviewed as part of the procurement policy, right? Um, I've got maybe 10, 15 different policies from different municipalities that I actually wanted to do, to benchmark what we do mm -hmm. and compare it to what other municipalities do. Um, presently, we're constrained. We cannot go less than whatever the um, OMB circular prescribes in terms of the, the, the um, well, proper uh, procurement um, because we received that program. Right. So, uh, and, and uh, if we want to go lower than that, I guess that that's up to the council and uh, to the department I manager. Do. We can operate within those parameters but if it's gonna hurt the operation, maybe something more of a review. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I thought that there was a reason why the county lowered, they had many contracts that people were paid at $24,000 because it was below that threshold of 25,000 where they needed it's, legislator approval. It's not only that, it's the city has been giving out service contracts for years. That's what I'm talking about, service contracts. Huge okay. dollar service contracts that have never been approved by the council. Right. That has to stop. What, what kind of service contracts are we talking about, right. John? Because Capazolo is a perfect well, example. Those are legal. If you want to do it with legal, that's different. But Capazolo, we, we have in, 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 our, in, our, in our procurement uh, policy, in terms of engineering and professional contracts, yeah. if we are expending over $6,000 for an engineer to do services, we're required to go to an RFP. Very right. time consuming to go to right. an RFP for each one of those little projects. So, you know, the larger projects generally it makes sense to do it, but what, what I'm saying is I think it should be raised to 10,000 for our that we, before we have to go to an RFP. For, because it's but not- the other yeah, stuff yeah. needs to, there's two different Indeed. topics here. Yeah, yeah totally different. When you're talking about your issue, that's a major capital project and it's probably going to be in the capital budget. Probably. Well, no, but you're talking about maintenance about issues as well. Some yeah, sometimes sometimes maintenance, maintenance issues, issues. There's, you know, uh, as an example, a pump know, breaks a pump. at the water plant. Yeah, no, I see. Like when we had to replace the well at 17, right. we needed to have an engineer yeah. come in and actually do a design on that. So. There's, there's different, but like, would you say personal co service contract? Would you s consider legal, accounting, consulting, uh, public relations? All of that yes. non yes. All yes. of that. Why, why yes. not just take the, the requirement for prof legal professional services and wrap it into the procurement pro policy to be similar to the um, to the um, to the engineering requirements? I, look, I mean, I'm, that's not my recommendation. I'm, I'm stating you know? the obvious. I mean, the FRB made it clear, and, and this is, mm -hmm. you know, a system that's developed over a long period of time. It's not recent. Our financial controls are abysmal. They made it very clear. Our financial controls are severely lacking, and we got we've spent lots of money on contracts for that were never approved by the council. And that has to stop. That has to. There has to be accountability in the system. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, maybe there's another way to do it, but this maybe. is what the county did to address the when they had the problem. Um, they they but made was it work. specifically to legal legal contracts. No, it's not legal. I, again, Christy Hightower, Todd Shapiro, uh, are the ones that come into mind initially. How much has Christie been paid without a, there's never been anything yeah. approved. Yeah. 
I would say non-design related. You know, Todd Shapiro got 40,000 bucks out of the city for three months of God knows what he did. Yeah. I, can, I, I, can we look at it so that it's separate? Yeah. DPW and you could write something separately from the contract have a different or service policy contract. Then and and then maybe everything's not treated equally. Maybe, like you said, there's something for emergency services or repairs or something that's separate. All I can say is that from a <coughs> public works perspective and an engineering perspective, mm -hmm. we've operated very well in making sure that any contract that we issue is needed and is, is you know. I, I agree with that, John. And unfortunately, I think that, that I, hasn't translated across other parts of the city. Right. Right, but to cripple the rest of the city because of one area doesn't make sense. And it's so not just one area, though. Separate the maintenance of the city from, yeah, I guess. from well, legal accounting and, and PR and. <coughs> you know what? I think we should defer to what is the kind of FRP. And, you know, and, uh, All right, we're going to have to do everything in the FRP. But the FRP. I don't think really we could, if we have to do everything in the FRB, we'll be broke. I mean, let's think about it. We, the, the FRB, we are required to create a corrective action plan yeah. within 90 days, which is what, February? Well, that's the control is all No, I get that, but who, some who of this stuff is the, in there, part gonna, of the corrective action who's plan. Who's going to take the lead on that for the uh, control report? Because I haven't gotten any direction yet. Well, isn't that what we're paying CMA twelve thousand bucks a month to help do? No, I, you, you guys hired uh, Ingerman and Smith, and they took over that audit review. Are they going to help us develop a program or a response to that? We're talking well, about they're doing something different. Report. The We're talking about the, the state controller's, controller's report, report has a, had a 90 day report. requirement. Well, no, the, the, the for how it was received. And I, can't, corrective action I can't develop the uh, corrective action report from the controller's report until I know what Ingram and Smith is telling us we can do and can't do. Well, what Ingram and Smith is doing is an internal investigation on. Well, then who's, who's going to be responsible for developing the response on how we're going to proceed to answer the controller's report? Which refers correct to me, correct. I, I was under the impression that's what CMA was paid to do. No. That's what Copazola was paid to do. And they, that's the report that Copazola was paid to do. No, no, what Copazola was paid to do was draft. That was a defense lawyer issue. To yes. respond to a controller's report was ridiculous. Copazola was in paid. Of, in terms of a corrective action plan, John, it should be you and Enoch that, 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 that developed the plan. If you need resources, then you need to tell us. Well, we're going to need reports. we're going to need resources from Ingram and Smith on how they plan to proceed That's with. That's why to write that response. A corrective action plan. Well, I listen legally. I don't know how we're going to go after some of those funds. That's the problem. That's the, no, that's, that's not a correct. That's, that's, that's part of that is part of the controller's recommendation. Okay, then you would need input from them on that. Correct. That's all I'm asking. If that's the case, you would need input from them. Because we're probably down to 60 days to respond. But the so. corrective action plan, my understanding was okay. We identified all this. Stuff, these systemic problems, mm -hmm. how are you going to address them? Right. That's the corrective action plan. That's what I thought was part of CMA's no. department no, by department analysis. Not. It's not CMA. CMA is okay. looking at our five year projections on where costs are going to go and what we can do to reduce those costs going forward. If, if, if you're directing me to develop a plan to respond to the controller's report within 90 days, I will do that with Ina. But I am going to need, on certain issues, I am going to need input from Ingram and Smith. Right. There are three separate reports. There yeah. is an FRB report that CMA was, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that CMA was engaged to help the city pursue, um, pursue the goals and objectives that were basically right. set in the FRB report. Mm -hmm. And then um, there are two state controllers Right. One that pertains to the financial situation right. of the city, and another one that pertains okay. to the payout. Right. So those two New York State controllers report, they have this 90 day um, response. 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 Right. Yeah. Um, so for those, those I guess the one with you were talking, the one yeah. payout one, that you probably yeah. have to yeah. have input from yeah. Andrew Smith on the payout one. And, and we, but, and, there may be some things in the draft report for the CMA that we may be able to use in response to the 
Oh, absolutely. Okay, right. I, I was, I guess the way, yeah. I guess I, the way CMA was sold to us when we voted on it was they were the financial advisor that was going to come in and, you know, help us with plan, five-year plans and things their, like that. Their whole so, thing is to, their whole report that CMA is, is doing for us is to project ahead over five years based on the current situation, current contracts, uh, and current financial conditions where we would be. Right. And then to show what's going to happen from a, a budget standpoint of view over those five years if we do nothing. Then their second part of their, their uh, charge is to determine how to offset those things and what changes we can make so that there's not a, a financial impact on the city and that we do get better bond ratings and, and, a, and a better financial fiscal stability. Right. And so is, isn't future. that the kind of stuff that would be in a corrective action plan? No, because the corrective the action plan for the that financial the financial expert, they've asked for specific things for us to address. So, so CMA basically is looking to how to um, move us into this structurally balanced right. budget for the next five years. That was years. just the interpretation of what the engineers said by the accountant. That's why they well, have interviewed all the departments and they are, they basically will see the opportunities mm -hmm. um, that they will document and incorporate into those multi-year plans. Um, but um, as far as the controllers, for, 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 from my standpoint, as far as the New York State Controllers Audit, the corrective um, action plan is something where we would say we agree with their comments or we disagree with their comments. And they're very specific, right? right. Yeah, no, and I, what are we planning on doing okay. about those? I've, I've done a corrective action plan. And we can do that. That's Okay. We, we can do that without the CMA, but obviously but, for but, that but the payout. Issue, we're gonna well, let us know what, yeah, then, yeah. then if you need resources. For the payout, definitely. Yeah, I didn't know that this was not in, in the works already. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, for whatever reason, I was under the assumption this is what CMA works, was working on. Right. It's in the works to the degree that we talked about the open finance, open mm -hmm. job time, and lead management. Mm -hmm. I guess we're having a more action. holistic approach to it mm -hmm. and trying to incorporate it into the operation. Right. Definitely. Yeah, and, and we've also trying to, add, we've already started developing procedures on time and attendance and things of those natures that will, will help. You right. know, we have regular meetings that we've been trying to, to, uh, to develop and we've given deadlines on getting those things done. Internal deadlines. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, Thank you, Lena. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Lena. And I know you've got to get home. Yeah, no, 10 o'clock, the aid leaves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like I said, this some, some of this may. Uh, do we want to go back to the boards and go through that list, or do we uh, want to save that for another? This, they have this, that on purpose. This, let me just say this right now, Karen. If the draft comprehensive plan had pointed out strongly about a planning board, now this is a planning advisory, but I think this is going to feed into um, future parking, building. No, that would be a, a, 
planner. Yeah, that's but that's different well, than a planning board, no? We, we're, I'm guessing the planning board would interact with a city planner if we oh, had okay. one. Correct. Which we don't okay. have. Correct. You read it theoretically. Every member of every single board of commission should understand that in terms of transparency and accountability, we may need to restart the boards. It may okay. be the exact same people, but we have to open up open up these boards instead right. of it having it be a popularity contest like right. it has been in the past. Like if you know a certain person, you get on the board. Right. We want to make sure that everybody that is a merit system, that everybody has a shot. Plus there's talent. We can't do it all. Yeah, we're missing out on a lot of people because they, they've been so disgusted that they, mm -hmm. they've, they've They've written you, Mike, that they've applied three times and never heard back. Exactly. Right. And, and now, like, now they're, I, okay. All right. you're actually right. Yeah, let's keep going. Keep going. Okay. The Public Safety Commission? Yes. Yeah. Recreation Commission? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Taxi Cab Board? I don't uh, think is that, that, is that, 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 um, it hasn't met in years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, there so are, maybe there are some things in the code that they, uh, uh, that, that they would need to meet on, but I don't think this, we've had any of those issues. I'd have to research a little further. Okay. I, remember, I remember those issues probably like 10 years ago, and I remember an infamous person being involved with that, and it wasn't really, it was kind All of right. Well, he said it hasn't been probably yeah. in 20 years, so let's figure out what it even does and if we need it. Okay, and zoning board? Yeah, they well, have Well, I don't think we're getting rid of the zoning board. Yeah, you have four members coming up in August. And one holdover. Right. One holdover. Hold he's, that that, 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 he's a holdover. Barry. Hold Barry. He's a holdover. I think it's so, term. So that slot, slot, slot could be open for somebody to apply. You, they, yeah. If they're interested, yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yes. then uh, I'll send an email to, to Miranda and copy everybody on uh, next steps. Yeah. I feel like I'm watching you on America's Got Talent. Can you say? I'm good. Um, you know, that, so basically, there's there's 12 other commissions, but we're going to ask John about those to evaluate those and see what can be consolidated. Yeah. This is all going on with the proposition that the charter still has to be fixed. So we have to be really careful not to have, you right. know, well, announcing this. It's going to be open, but it's not going to be open to apply tomorrow. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, and then we have to come up with, like I said, the application process for people in the public. Glenn Cove has a really good one. Okay, maybe we can benchmark them or something. No, I, what I said, they have a nice introduction on their oh. website to oh. applying for boards and stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll Is setting up an online form possible or? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Can, John, can you recommend, John or Dave, can you just take care of that or make a recommendation to us? Absolutely. Yeah. We'll okay. All right. Uh, We'll do this one quick. This, uh, there was some discussion about the Long Beach newspaper record. Oh, right now it's the tr Tribune, which nobody knows where you get a copy of it, but um, it may only exist for stuff like yeah, how many public copies? notifications. Well, I, I read it after I, I found it downstairs. Um, it goes through a lot of different channels. And no one knows where it is, and I've never seen it. I believe they're they're based in Island Park. Yeah, they are, but they don't have a, yeah. they don't have an online presence. No, they do not. Um, it right. looks like a mom and pop. I mean, no it's a very small that. operation. Well, and so, yeah. you know, is there a big cost difference? We would get put out a bid. Do we? Say yeah, I would, I would recommend that if we were going to change um, newspapers, we would put it out for for our. Um, the reason, the main reason that we stay with the Tribune is it fulfills our legal requirements and it does it probably the cheapest out of any of the, the three. Pretty much the three choices we have would be the Tribune, the Herald, and News Day. And there wasn't a lot in the, there wasn't a lot of, we didn't put a lot in. Just the announcement of the meeting, which is normal, and then um, right. so Mr. What, Miranda had some requests for bids. Yeah, yeah. Just, just so you know, too, that, that's the official document for putting the bid out, but right. that's right. not the only place we put the bids out. So we have a lot of free, uh, you know, we need to legally put it out there so right. we get an affidavit, but we also have a lot of free services, uh, you know, that 
specifically go out to contractors and things of like that that we put the bids out on also. So, like bid, like bid docs. Well, bid, bid if, we, if we contacted Newsday bid net, bid doc. and the Herald and just asked what it would cost to do it through that, we're not obligated, right? It's cost no. per line, right, David? Yes, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, I'm guessing news. So when you have these bonds that are uh, like a page and a half, right. so I'm guessing uh, really the only thing that would be the Herald at that. And the Herald will only print those notices in the Herald that is to Long Beach, right? They would print it down to everybody else. Yeah, you'd have to pay for yeah, yeah, to pay for different editions. Right. When we have the stuff in the Herald, we just pay for the Long Beach edition. Okay. So because the Tribune covers more territory, it's cheaper that way as well. Yeah, it's cheaper okay. than their per line cost. I'll see if I can find, I think I had some, at one point, uh, Jack had me publish them in both, and that was very, very, very expensive. Um, I could see if I could find a bill that would compare the same ad from both. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Right. Just a comparison. Um, but just yeah. just a, couple of, a couple of the things on this too. Um, there are certain things, like, like John said, RFPs, if there's the legal requirement to put it out, when we do bonds, I have to publish the uh, the estoppel notices, and um, certain bonds I have to publish verbatim. Um, a lot of the stuff I've, I, by reading the code, I know that we can. It used to be we would publish uh, every ordinance and everything in its entirety, right. mm -hmm. and that could be very expensive. Mm -hmm. But it does allow us. There is the option in there to put a summary, and that's what I've been doing. I put a summary. I put. A, you know the, the basic almost like the legislative memo that right. you see in the beginning yeah. of it and then I put a link I put in there this is available on our website at yeah. and then I put I put the link where okay. it's available right. at uh, for, for the full for the full um, and, the, and then the information we have is, not, is on the website so I'm correct well okay. and, and that, that, that's my next point is that a lot of the stuff that I publish I publish the proceedings from every meeting and that's really a derivative of a long time ago when that was the only way people could get that information was to get it out of the legal page on the paper. Now, all that information is there, it's available the next morning on the website. Mm -hmm. it's and if someone wanted it in an alternative format, we could have that done. Such as? Say they wanted it in Braille. Um, Braille? I've never had that, uh, mm -hmm. I'd have to look into that, yeah. but yeah. in print, we have in print that. definitely. We okay. could definitely provide printed copies of it. Um, but one of the things, the reason we publish the proceedings is it's something that's in the code. And it's, there's no require, There's no state requirement for us to publish that in the, in, in the paper. And I would oh. recommend that we, we want to discontinue that practice. Okay. Because really, the information, it's, it, it, it's the, the need for it, we've, really, we've gone past the need. Well, in the digital age, it's right. We would still information is shared differently. Right, now. and, and that, would, that would mean that, as far as my office is concerned, then if, if we did eliminate that from from the code, we would then just publish the public you know, the, the hearing notices mm -hmm. um, and like the estoppel notices for the bonds, and that, that that's that's it. And anything that were required that's also required outside the code that's under state or federal law, we would definitely yeah. right. publish. But that would reduce that would reduce the cost down, and then if we did go to a different paper um, with, with, with an RFP, the, the, the cost may not hit right. us as bad. Thank you, David. Liz, as opposed to putting it on Braille, could we do an audio on the website? I, I'm just I'm just saying I would. No, no, I'm not asking. Perfect. In other words, if somebody who it would couldn't see today could do the audio. Asking. You know, the, for John, that's actually a question for the legal department. They should be able to an answer any accessibility questions. Yeah, I've never been asked that. So. Okay, I have, but okay. then again, I was told ask about both this next slide. All right. I guess, done? Uh, I think we're done. We have a thank you so very much. We have much. a couple of everybody for coming out. Personnel matters we got to discuss previously, but that's not done in front of the public. So thanks for coming. Thank like you. I said, this was a little trial and error. Uh, I didn't see anybody actually sleeping, so uh, maybe that's a good thing. Hopefully, this is. Uh, uh, you want your packet uh, sent home tomorrow? Sent home, yes. Please. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'll have it sent home tomorrow. Yes, yeah. Okay, that's why I wanted to make sure before I had to say thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.